Hello guys, welcome to another video tutorial by No Code Africa. In this tutorial, I am gonna teach you how to build a Nike sneaker store application without writing codes. All right, this is going to be a series of front-end development tutorials within Flutterflow. And then eventually, if at all, uh, I, I get a lot of requests via the comments section of this particular uh, tutorial, all right, so I will consider building the backend side for this application. But for the meantime, we're just going to look at how we can build this particular UI for this application within Flutterflow. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so uh, for us to start building something like this, all we just need to do is head straight to uh, Flutterflow and then create uh, a new uh, Flutterflow project. So I'll click here to create a new Flutterflow project and then I will call the project Snikey app. So I'm gonna call the project Snikey, Nike, right? Why did I say Snikey? Nike uh, sneaker app. Okay, so uh, I will just go ahead and click on create blank and then uh, I'll just wait for it to load up. It's asking me right now if at all I want to set up, uh, you know, set, set up the project in Firebase. So for now, I don't want to set up the project in Firebase, so I'll just keep it. And then now we can actually begin building our application. So this is going to be beginner friendly. So let me just undo that. All right. So when you click on uh, skip the skip uh, the Firebase setup process, then you will be brought into this particular screen and in this screen you just need to take off this app bar right so i just select it and then delete it okay so now we go back to the project itself this is the project all the credit goes to the uh, product designer who made this available for us for free in the figma community if you check the description under this video you will see a link to assess the the, the, the ui ux design for yourself while trying to replicate it okay all right, so uh, here we have a couple of screens. I do not know the number of screens that we have here, but they are quite a number, all right? So we are just going to focus uh, on, you know, translating this into uh, Flutterflow. Then eventually, if at all I have a good number of people requesting for the backend, then we will go ahead and build the backend for the project. But meanwhile, let's enjoy the process. Okay, so this is uh, the screens and uh, if at all you've been following my previous tutorial, you'll notice that I don't always put these because this already comes with the phone, right? It comes with the, the gadget that you're using in, in assessing the application. So there's no need for any of this part, all right? So we will just start with these. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll just click on the, the whole screen to see the dimension. So here we have 375 by 812. And so we can actually start building it like that. So come over here back to Flutterflow and then click here, change it to these, all right? So we'll just start building it with these. So this is now 375 by 812, all right? And then with that, we can now build our application. Where do we start from? We start from these, of course. So this is the, uh, this is an image and the dimension is 157 by 130. We just need to go ahead and then uh, pick uh, an image widget and also put it here with that exact dimension and then bring the whole thing inside here, okay? So let's go ahead and go to the widget tree. And with that, we will go ahead and click on the column. All right, these being the very first uh, widget uh, component of the widget tree is called the scaffold, right? So this one, you cannot delete it, it's fixed. All right, so if you come over here, you see it has a default name called scaffold, right? These particular ones are just uh, other widgets. It has like a generic name called column. And then we have like, you can name the, the column here. You can click here to in edit it, like to change what you want to call the column. This could be like maybe main column, etc. All right, so let's go ahead and start building our application. Now, uh, here I'll just go ahead and click on this particular place which says add a child to this widget. And then I will add an image widget. And the image dimension is 157 by 130 pixels. So I will just go ahead and come over here and then change it to 157 by 130. So 130, okay? Then I will go ahead and wrap this image. Okay, before I even do that, let's go back, come back to the design here and scroll down on the right hand side, click on export and then change this to maybe 3x just to increase the resolution. 
and then go ahead and click to export all right so i've exported it but before we use it all right let's click on this first part and get the color of the background right so the background here is blue let's turn on the uh this particular mode the developer mode so that i can easily copy colors when i want to copy them so this is the color of this particular screen so i take it over here and i need to add it to this place but before i do that i need to come here to the column right click on the column and wrap the column with a container all right so then make the width of the container infinite by clicking this and make the height infinite as well and then click on the fill color and paste this all right so this was the color we picked up before now let's go ahead and then find our image this is the image that we picked all right so this is the image now what we need to do now is let's remove this border radius okay so because it didn't have a border radius for us to import or bring an image into Flutterflow, we have to change this image type from network to asset and then we have to go ahead and click here and then fetch it so here i'll just go ahead and fetch the image i have and then there you go now it's going to be be inside Flutterflow. now we have it now uh, the next thing i need to do is click on this column and then say central line all right so now we have the logo at the center of the screen perfect we are done with the very first screen which is this one now this second one here is going to be a bit tasking all right uh so because we're going to be designing all of these inside uh one screen all right so how do we do that first of all let's go ahead and then click on the the main screen itself and then locate the color this uh it's a bluish but not the same as the same blue as this one so we will click on here to see more colors and then this is the color so i copied the color by just tapping on it and then now I will come over here inside Flutter Flow and click on these to create a new page. Then click on create blank. And then I will go ahead and just, uh, let's call these onboarding, all right? So I'll just call these onboarding. And then I will go ahead and click on create page. Click on this to delete this up bar. And just like we did before, right click on the column, the first column here, wrap the widget with a container, all right? Then make the containers with infinite make the height infinite as well and click here to paste in the fill color beautiful now we have this the next thing we need to do quickly is we need to go ahead and then start setting up our application like you know the design here so first of all we need something right so the whole of this thing here is like the whole of this is is with, with one thing except this button right so, okay, not even accept this, but I think everything is inside themselves like this. So when you swipe and swipe and swipe. Okay, so how do we go ahead and then create this entire feature, right? So this is going to take some time. So breeze, breeze, breeze. All right, so I'm clicking add a child to do widget. The widget is the column. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to be looking for something called page view, all right? Breeze up. This is going to be a bit challenging, but let's do it. Now, we will go ahead and then uh, we have a couple of things here, right? So you see here we have uh, this spiky thing here on the edges, all right? So I'm just going to copy the text. The text here says, welcome to Nike, right? Uh, let me see. What does it say completely? Welcome to Nike, okay? So welcome to Nike. It's, um, the font is called Railway, all right? So let's go over here back to Flutterflow go to where do we do that we will click on here for our team settings we will go to typography and icons and then we will come here and click on the primary part let's see this should be a google font i hope so railway yeah it's a google font so we'll click on this and then let's change the secondary fonts to to railway all right so now we have these two things done for us the next thing we need to do quickly is we are going to go ahead and start setting up our application right so here we have a text widget right and then we have something beside it okay so what we are going to do now is um how do we do this we're going to be a bit uh we're going to play around with these things somehow okay and uh make sure that we get it all right okay so here so here, what we're going to do quickly is I can bring in the text widget. All right, let's bring in the text widget first. So uh, now we have in this particular part, we have 
the the page view all right so this is the main construct of the entire page view right but now we have individual pages all right so what i'll just do is i'll click on this image and just delete it all right so delete the images click on this one delete it as well click on this one and delete it as well all right this is the next thing that we're going to do so we'll click on this page view and we'll add a column inside it all right so now there's a column inside here and then the next thing i need to quickly do is i'm going to go ahead and uh add the uh, add the uh, start adding some features right so i'm clicking on this now to add a row right so i've added a row and inside the row i'm going to add a text widget all right so i'm adding a text widget inside the row already and then what i now do is i paste uh oh i thought i copied something so i will just go ahead and copy it again come back here and paste it it's saying only welcome all right so let's say welcome to nike all right so let's just type it at once why not so uh here the the font size is the font weight is 900 by 30 pixels okay so here i'll just scroll down and look for 900 right so 900 is like the biggest part by 30 so i have 30 and then here i will just go ahead and copy the colors that we have here so um here it's saying it's not like pure white i don't know why but let's just copy it and see what's happening there so here is where you paste the color of the text and paste it all right so this is what it gives me okay and um are uh, it's not exactly the same because we're using lower cases so uh let's say uh welcome actually it's supposed to be like this welcome to nike all right then uh now that i've gotten this the next thing i need to do quickly is i need to go ahead and uh set some things up so i have uh there's some little things here right that i need to ensure that i i get it the same like this so first of all it's this design this shape right so we have this in other ways i would have just gone ahead to add some padding on the right and padding to the left and then click on expansion this one to have to assume the the same shape here but we have to put into consideration this guy here right we have to put into consideration this guy here how do we bring this guy close to this particular text and then it's always going to be there all right so now what we're going to do there is we just need to go ahead and uh make it such that let me go ahead and then turn this uh no so let's go ahead and wrap these i'm going to wrap this widget in a container all right let me show you what i'm doing i'm wrapping this widget with a container the container's dimension is 219 by 70 pixel so i'm going to come over here and say 219 all right by 70 pixels okay so now i have that i'm going to clear the color of the container okay then i'm going to click on my text and then i'm going to center align it all right now i have this kind of design so i'm going to click on the row now and center align it fine now we're very close now the next thing i need to do is put this particular thing here right so that we can have this same arrangement now how do we do this right we can use we can add these in a stack and all of that but the problem is when you now go ahead and then uh, change your device right it's not going to come out the same way anymore so what we're going to do right now is we're just going to go ahead and in this row i'm going to add an image right so this is a spike it's 27 pixel by 30 pixels so i'm going to go ahead in this row click on this and add an image in the image are uh, it's going to be 27 pixel 27 by 30 i i believe that was what was there then i will remove the border radius and then i will go ahead and uh, export this image all right so i'll come over here uh, change this to 3x and just preview it just to be sure then export it all right that's exported and then now what am i going to do i'm going to scroll down here come over to network change it from network to asset and then click over here to to get the image so now i have the image this is it i upload it wait for a couple of seconds now it's going to be appearing on this side not to worry so i will go ahead and click on the container here click on it again to close it then i will just drag this one down right 
Now this one comes over here. Fine, we're getting very close. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, I will look at what is happening here in the design. All right, so there is a, there is a spacing. Let me zoom it in so you can see a bit. So um, there is a spacing here between this text and this. It's a, I can't really tell what it is, but it looks like it's 15. Like the heights between this top and this one, right? Maybe I could turn over this to see if I can see something like that. So uh, it's like 15, right? So, but not really perfectly 15, so maybe 10. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give this container that contains all of this particular one, a padding on the top 15. These are some strategies that I, I, I need to show you. So, but now it's following this, right? Uh, let me see. So we have a row here. We have a, let me see. Okay, so I'm supposed to give it maybe 25. It's still following this, it's pushing it down. Uh, okay, okay. All right, so what I could do now is I could click on the row and then do like this, right. So now I click on the row and I'm telling it I want everything here to be aligned to the top, all right? So now it's nearly there. So now I need to go ahead and click on the container, return it back to what I thought it should have, should have been, so which is 15, all right? So now we have something similar to these, right? Something similar to these, but anyways, this is somehow on top of it, right? But if at all we want to do that, we're going to have to use stack to do it. But now when you're using stack, when you change the, the dimension of your screen, it's going to also uh, distort the entire thing. So I think we'll just leave it here, all right? And then let's continue building. But I will show you a variant of that maybe towards uh, the end, all right? Now, uh, let's go ahead and then set this up as well, right? So we have, uh, we have these, uh, the next thing I should actually set up here, let me turn back my developer mode, uh, is not this one, it should actually be this one. Let me see, not that one, not that one, not that one, not this one either, uh, not the button. I'm trying to see how we can have access to, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an image here, right? So if we click on this and then, you know, you preview, you see that this is a human leg, all right? But we have something else here, right? So we have something else there, and that's what I'm trying to get. So let's click on this, and then this. Let's click on this first, and then I'm trying to get something here, and then this, and then this. Okay, so this is it. This is the vector for this. All right, so I will just go ahead and click on that, and I will export it. Now we use a, our 3x and export it. Okay, so this is uh, the dimension for these. It's a uh, dimension for these is, uh, let me see. Uh oh, I've lost track of that again. No, I think it's this one. So we have this is by 134 by 18 pixels. So let's come back here to Flutterflow and click on the column and we're going to add it in a row actually. I'll just add it inside a row. Uh, it's going to be an image, all right? The image is going to be 134 by 18. So I, I let me start by removing the border radius and changing this as well. So 134 by 18, okay? And then uh, the next thing I'm gonna just quickly do is I will go ahead and then uh, set up some other few things like, uh, okay, no, no need to set up anything. So I'll just change this from network to asset and then I will click on here to bring the image into Flutterflow, all right? So I'll just wait for it. This is the image and it's in here now, okay? So with this noun, uh, you can go ahead and just uh, click on the row and center align it, all right, by clicking this. And let's look at the padding, the space in between them is 19 so I'll give it to the row not the image so 19 and then I'll come back here and let's click on this one and look at the padding from the top let's say from here so let's use 65 so I'll click on this row and give it a 65 okay for this one so 65 pushes it down a bit now we have that the next thing we need to do quickly is let's go ahead and then uh, set up like some things that are you know very very obvious in our application 
right? So first of all is this human leg, right? So we need to go ahead and add that up. So I will come over here and just ex check it as X, 3X, and then I'll export it. Okay, so the dimension is uh, roughly, I will use the dimension in the exported file, not what I'm seeing here, all right? Okay, so I will click on here and then I will bring it on board. I'll just add an image here, right? And then I will add just the image, but not right now. So I'll just delete the border radius first, scroll down, come to image type, change it to assets, and then go over here and get the, uh, what is it called? And get the image. So I'll hover on it and I'll see here, it says 1125 by 1765. So I'm gonna upload it, 1125 by 1765. So uh, I will just wait and say 111125 by 1765. Okay, so uh, where is it? My image is not showing. Okay, it's not showing actually. One, one, two, five. This is the height. It's pushing it really way down uh okay so let's make these uh 500 okay so this is 500 now let me c come over here and see what we have here okay so the fixed height here was 420 so let's use 420 all right so um let's say four no not three 420 okay so we have these here right so i think this is perfect then we can go ahead and set some other things inside so here we have this, and it's technically on top of these. It looks like it's on top of these leg. All right, so we can just click on this image, right click on it and say wrap widget with a stack because we wanna put some things on top of it. So now we have that image in a stack, so we can click here to add another image. All right, so I'm adding another image. And then what image is that? It's gonna be this vector image, this Nike vector image, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I will scroll down, come to export, and uh, I'm trying to preview it, but nothing is showing here. Nothing is showing here. So this is a vector. Uh, nothing is pretty much showing here. I can't really see anything. Change it to 3x. Uh, okay, so nothing is showing here. Let me turn out this and look at it again. So um, preview. Nothing is showing here actually, right? So guys, have you seen anything here? Nothing is showing here. So um, what I can simply do now is this is it, right? This is pretty much it. If I hide it, it goes off. If I click on it, it shows. All right, so I will just go ahead and export it, right? I don't know what is there, but there's something there, of course. So here it says uh, 482 by 166, okay? So let's change this and say 482, 482 by, we will say 166, okay? So 166, then we can change this from, like delete the border radius and scroll down and change this from network to assets and then just go ahead and then upload the image. Let's just hope there's something there, actually. Okay, actually there's something, but it's just, it doesn't really visible for us to see. All right now, but here it is, it's something here now. So now, um, I don't know the height from the, this image, So, but here I'm seeing three, three, four, so we can use it. So I'm gonna give it a, a padding on the top here, three, three, four, is it too much? I think it's too much. Uh, let's change it to two, all right? These are not straight images, that's why it's not really like straight up, okay? So, but now I think that one is fine. Then we need to do a couple of other things, all right? Let's, uh, let's include these, uh, this particular thing here is gonna be a padding, it's gonna be a stack, all right? It's gonna be a stack, and uh, uh, I think it's also gonna be a stack on top of this, right? So let's, uh, let's look for it, all right? So welcome to Nike, let's scroll down and just look for the different things that we have here. So uh, vector, okay? So what other thing do we have? 
our line, our highlight, and vector. Okay, this is the whole thing. Let's click on this to see what is happening. Group. All right, so on the line. Okay, so let's group highlight. All right, so this is something here. So we have one thing here, 90 by 54. Let's just go ahead and export it, all right? So uh, 3x, so 90 by 54. And then we have something else here, the same thing. Uh, export again, and we changed it, all right? So this is just me teaching you how to build uh, the front end of your application, all right? So don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And thank you very much. Like the video as well. Thank you so much. So uh, here we have these. And then we just have to put these, these. Then we put the button. Then later on we can put this smiley face. So what we need to do here quickly is we will just go ahead and um, what do we do? We will go ahead and do a couple of things here. All right. Let's, uh, let me check. Let me check. Let's click on the column. No. No, we have to go back to the stack. All right, so yes, we're gonna have to go back to the stack. Let's add an image on the stack. 90 by 90 by 54, so 90 by 54. So let's say 90 by 54, and then we can change this, all right? So we'll just scroll down, change it from network to asset quickly, and then we can go ahead and click on this to bring up our, our image. So I'm picking this first, all right? So with these, I have this design. So now I have to go ahead and find their position. So here, this is like, I'm going to hold on uh, uh, Alt just to see what is happening here. But it's not giving me the perfect figure. So let me turn on developer mode and see if I can get something. It's not giving me. Uh, it's saying 252. It's not giving me. It's just giving me a lot of combinations. Uh, okay, so... So, but it's 252 so roughly. So, but I, maybe 200. So, well, at some point you have to make some assumptions. So here I'll make an assumption of 200. And then uh, I need to make an assumption for the height as well. So here, the height is like 444, right? So let's try it. If it doesn't give us, we make it 344. So let's say 444, way too much. Let's change this to three. Four, four, all right so now we've gotten something closer right and then uh, wait a minute okay this is not giving the full thing that is inside there so we have to click on this all right we have to click on this particular box to show everything that contained inside it so I'll go ahead and click on ctrl D to duplicate this image right and then I will swap some things right so this is it I need to now do it for this one, all right? This one is roughly uh, a couple of distance away from the site, so maybe, I don't know, 50. So let's say 50 here, all right? So on the site here is gonna be 50, maybe, or maybe 30 even, 30. And then we can now look at the height. The height is gonna be like, uh, are, well, we can't really tell, but it's gonna be higher than this. So let's say uh, 444. All right, so something like this, all right? So we have this and we have to do the same, we have to change the content, all right? So I will go ahead and click on this to change the content to this one, all right? So this is gonna be the content now. And then the next thing we need to do quickly here is the button. So I'll click on here for the button and I'm going to adjust a couple of things, all right? So here, the button is 335 by 50. I don't really need to memorize the width. Uh, I just need to get the, uh oh, let me just copy this. It's 600 by 14 for the text on the button. So I'll click on the column itself. Then I'll click on, uh, no, 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 not this column. There's another column here. Okay, this is the main column, uh oh. No, it's going to be the column inside my page view. Yes, please. Now, I'll go ahead and add a button inside there. So this is my button. And my button, I'm going to make my button, uh, I'm going to click on this to say expansion. Then I will say infinite width. And this is going to be 50, very important. 
right? The text on my button was uh, get started. Then uh, let me click on these to get the color. I think roughly these, right? And uh, it has a border radius of 13. So uh, I will paste the fill color here. And then I will give it some padding on the left and right. So 20 pixels on the left and right. So here we have uh, 20. Then we have 20 here as well. I will scroll down and give it a border radius of 13 pixels. Okay. All right. Then now that I have done that, the next thing I need to do is get the color of my text and the font size. So I'm going to copy the color of the text. It's the font size 600 by 14. So I'll just go ahead and click on here and go to the text and then just paste this here as the color. Then change this to 600 and it's and make this 14. Okay. So like this now we have this. We need to remove this elevation by just make deleting it. All right. Now we are very close to finishing our design. What we just need to do quickly is to rearrange the position of these, uh, the, uh, the, the, the thing that makes the, you know, the navigation like this, all right? So we just have to, you know, change that. But now, there is, there might be a problem because uh, this is supposed, this is one screen and it's like, it's changing, right? So uh, if we go ahead and then push it at this point, we're going to have some issues. So we're going to have to leave it at the same level like this one, right? Yeah, because we can't like fix this one separately from this one. So we need to go ahead and then just adjust this particular height here. So let's go ahead and scroll down. You see the indicator alignment. So we'll click here to put it at the middle. Let's go ahead and click on these, uh, this thing here and then copy the color, all right? And we will say the active color is yellow, all right? And then the inactive color is just going to be white, all right? And then uh, what else? I think the, the dot width, we can say 32. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Expansion factor, spacing 16, maybe. Uh, Let's see. Uh, no, eight is okay. Uh, dot height, uh, maybe twelve. Okay, not that's too much. Dot width. Um, let me see. So let's say uh, sixteen. Well, maybe twenty. All right. So we will just leave it like this. And then the next thing we need to do quickly is we need to, uh, if we click on here, we're bringing it to the middle. If we click on here, we're putting it here. So we need to increase the padding here. So this is supposed to maybe 50. All right. Uh, let's increase it again to maybe uh, 200. Okay. So something like this. So 200. And uh, let me make this uh, maybe not to 200, maybe 180 all right so we leave it at this point okay so now we have this uh, design and for me it's pretty okay and uh we can go ahead and then set up the other screens and then that will be all for this particular part of the tutorial all right so let's go ahead and set up for this one and then this one and this one is very similar all right and so uh let's go ahead and see how we can do that all right so um, for this particular part, let's just jump right into it. Let's close this first page view and click on this to open another one. Click on this to add a column to your screen. And then in the column, let's start working on it. So what do we have here? First of all, we have this image is somehow over it and this one is also over it somehow. So this is like the main guy. So let's click on this main guy and export him. All right, so we will export the main guy in uh, 3x preview, download it. All right, so then here in this design, this is more like a 309 by 183. So I'll click on the column here and add an image. All right, so the image is going to be 309, uh, I think, right? So that was 309 by what? 
309 by 183 so by 183 okay now I can go ahead and then just delete this click this to change from network to asset and then go find my image all right so here I will just go ahead and then set things up for myself so put this up here and there you go okay so uh, now that we have this the next thing we need to do is get this other thing so I will just uh, download these things all right so uh, it's 90 by 54 as well so but let's just download it download them first so I'm downloading that and this guy as well and I'm gonna download him too so uh, download that I think that's pretty much it I have this water one I can still use it and uh, everything else checks out all right so this is 90 by 54 I will go ahead and then uh, this is my design I will just click on this to make sure that it shows everything all right I will wrap these widgets in a stack because I want to put some things on it all right and uh, here on this one I will go ahead and then uh, put some things inside it right so what do I put inside it I can go ahead and then do a couple of things right let's first of all uh, look at what we have here right so we have uh, this is 27 here and roughly about 73 from here so uh, let's add this uh, let's add an image so the image here is 90 by 54 so I'm gonna add 90 by 54 here all right so 90 by 54 and then change this to zero yeah and then change from network to asset and then click here to upload the image all right don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and then I will click on here to upload it all right now I will also need to do some things like this I have to click on these to just yeah capture that very well now it is here right and uh, what I need to do now is I'm going to have to go ahead and say this is um, okay hold on hold on guys so I'm going to go ahead and give the whole of this stack all right the stack here I'm gonna give it a uh, 73 yes I'm gonna give it 73 as a padding from the top so 73 pushes it down what a bit and then this guy is just where it's supposed to be and then now this guy this guy is 45 by 45 and it's 304 from the left so we can go ahead and then add another uh, image so we're saying 3 uh, 35 is it 45 by 45 yes it's 45 by 45 so 45 by uh, 45 and then change this one uh, change this one to uh, asset and then scroll down to get the the details here all right so uh, I'm getting the details here okay so now we have this and there you go so it was 304 I think so 304 as padding and there you go so it's now here on this side okay so pretty much mm, 304 right that's okay guys pretty much okay then what we could do here next is to start putting up our text here but don't forget now this particular guy is under this text all right this particular guy is under this text and we need to just go ahead and set it up so I actually think if I do this then you can actually go ahead and replicate here and then just do it so I will stop on this part all right so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I will go ahead and then set things up but first of all we need something under this all right and so how do we go about getting something under this we need to go ahead and then uh let me see let me see all right let's first of all get this text sorted out so let's uh let's get this text sorted out no just click on here actually to copy it it says 700 by 34 all right so let's click on the column now and add a row okay so i have added a row in the row i'm gonna add a text 
the tax is 700 let's paste the tax first so this is it and it's 700 all right let's click here and change it 700 by I think 34 all right yeah so 700 by 34 copy the color here and it has some 30 30 on the, on the left and right so this is the color here I will go ahead and click on this expansion and give it a right here 30 all right and give it 30 here all right it just gives us this breakdown instead of using a container then I'll go ahead and centralize it center align it and then now that we've gotten that we need to just go ahead and then have the next thing below all right so I will just go ahead and then uh, I'm going to wrap these in let me see you see there's something here and it's supposed to also be covering this so I will go ahead and wrap these two people these two things in uh, well I can do it in a container but it still still need to be wrapped in a column so I'm wrapping it in a column already and then I click on the row and duplicate it right then I can come back here and then copy this I want to copy the, the text here no let's just click on this it's 400 by 16 so I'll click on here and paste the text all right and then I will say 400 by 16 so 400 by 16 there you go and uh, let's look at the padding it's like 12 all right 12 so we can say uh, here padding on the top is 12 okay so now we have that and then here also we have padding from here 48.3 let's give that to uh, the column itself so the column that contains everything so uh, no not the column not yet now we're going to right click on this and wrap this with a stack now the reason is because we need to put something under it so let's go ahead and then uh, give these uh, stack the the padding from the top so it's 47.15 so I will put it here 47.2 all right now we have that now let's go ahead and click this to add an image all right so I'm adding an image the image is going to be the dimension of these so it's more like a 482 by 166 so I will say 482 uh, that's actually bigger than my screen here my screen size all right so but let's just say 482 all right by 166 let's see the result and effect of this 166 remove the border radius okay and change from network to asset and let's just download this one specifically all right so just download it come to 3x and export it all right then we go back to Flutter flow and then click here to upload the image and let's look for it all right so there you go this is the image we upload it we'll wait for a couple of seconds we will see it all right so it's now at the back okay so everything is fine really so uh, with these now we are actually perfectly fine okay so the next thing we just need to do quickly is add the button so I wouldn't like to add like go ahead and start suffering to create a button I would just go ahead and click on the first page that we have here then I will click on the button and I will copy the button and I will go ahead and click on the page view just to close it then click on this one to go back to this one click on here and paste my button alright so here this is my button what I am going to quickly do here is I'm going to give it some padding from the bottom so if I click here bottom is 36 alright so I will click here and say I want it to balance at the bottom right and uh, well it's gonna be 36 let me just still put it 36 oh it's not okay so just leave it like that it's it's better it's okay so now we have our next design so uh, it's a little bit different from what we have here but uh, I think here is what we need to do now is like maybe give some more spacing uh, from the top let's see okay this one is a bit closer uh, yeah it's a bit closer so this is a uh, 26 26 and um, this is not I'm trying to figure out these so our text here is not giving us the the real vibe so this is supposed to be fashionable 
So let's just go ahead and increase this, right? Uh, or is there something we didn't do? So it's 400 by 16. This is 400 by 16. I don't know why we didn't have this exact thing. So maybe the font is different. We can go ahead and just uh, make this uh, 50, for instance. Yeah, and maybe 50 here too. Yeah, something like that. So pretty much it. It's a bit like that. And then we can... The other things we could do, like, uh, like this thing here, we can also bring it on board here. Let's go ahead and do it. Why not? Let's come over here and uh, let's say 3x and uh, export it. This is more like 218 by 17 pixels. So it's in the column. Like, let's just click here and add it. Uh, no, not this one. Not this one. It's going to be in this particular part. Actually, this stack. Okay. Or preferably, no, no, no. It's going to be in the stack. So we will add here an image. Okay. The image is 218 two one by 17. So we can see here 218 by 17 by 17. Let's go. So we change this from network to assets. And then we can just go ahead and then upload this. All right. So with these, we'll just wait for a couple of seconds and then have this. We have this now. We're now going to go ahead and then it's 52 from here and it's roughly uh let me see there's gonna be some all right so it's 258 259 so let's say here 259 uh from the top that's a lot so let's just make it 159 well there some of them are not really positioned very well so we might have errors in let's say 65 okay so here it says 52 Okay, so there you go. We have something similar now. All right, so with these now, and I believe that you will be able to like, uh, you know, design something similar to your, app, something similar in your application. I think here I can just go ahead and copy this, Control C, and then I will close these and click on here and uh, just paste the same thing, right? And then with these now, we can just go ahead and then preview our application and see how it looks like. All right now that's uh, that's how to go ahead in building your onboarding site in any application right that no matter how complex it is so we have been able to do this uh, technically we have done these three pages now we will continue doing the registration and forgot password details all of these in the upcoming uh, Part of this tutorial don't forget this is mostly gonna be front-end but even at the end a lot of people are asking for back-end then I will consider making a back-end for this all right so let's let's just uh, go ahead and look at what we have so well here you have our application we can just like swipe and then see so now the reason why we have this white background is because uh, these there are some details that we provided by the the user's phone like the dates the time mostly the time and some other parameters here and then the navigational buttons that way we have all of this here so so far we have our design looking sweet all right i believe that you like it and you've enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to subscribe and like this video as well see you in the next tutorial thank you very much Okay, hello guys, welcome to another video tutorial by No Code Africa. And in this tutorial, we're just going to continue building our Nike sneaker store mobile application with our writing codes using Photoflow. All right, let's jump right into it. Okay, so um, in the previous third tutorial, we had done uh, this particular design. We created the homepage and the onboarding screen, right? So this is purely uh, front-end development uh, tutorial because I have been doing a couple of backend so I just decided to okay let's just build some front end and just uh, you know show you guys how to achieve some complex front end designs using Photoflow so we're going to try to go back to uh, you know building the different designs that I found here alright so if at all you've not seen the part one of this video just check the description 
under this video and you will see a link to the part one of the video. Meanwhile, please don't forget to just hit uh, the thumbs up button, which is to like this video and click to subscribe to this channel if at all you've not done so. All right, so let's uh, jump right into the course. Okay, so we did this part. So now we're just going to jump straight into this one. All right, this is pretty basic, right? So, but let's just go ahead and create it. Why not? All right, so let's, um, yeah, let me just increase my screen brightness. And then I will just go ahead and click on here to get uh, the new new screen, all right? So I will call this screen uh, sign in, all right? So uh, this screen is called sign in. And then I'll click on create page. And now I have the page already. Now there, there is a small, uh, you know, uh, design here. So if we zoom in, you see that there's a small circle with an arrow to the left, all right, inside the circle. So I will just go ahead and click on the circle and then scroll down. I will see uh, the color of the circle. So if I click here, I'll see the color. So this is the color. I just click to copy it. And what I need to do is I'll click here to remove the app bar, all right? So I pretty much don't like using the app bar a lot. I can actually create my own app bar. So I'll just click on the column here. Click on add a chart to this widget, which is this icon here, and click to add an, a row, right? Inside the row, we're going to add uh, a container, all right? We're going to say that we want the container to have a circular shape, all right? And then we are going to look at the dimension of the container. So it's 44 pixel by 44, technically, right? So it's, uh, that means the diameter here is gonna be 44. And we're gonna click here to paste the color code that we copied, all right? So now that we have this, the next thing we need to do is I will go ahead and then click on the main column inside the scaffold. I will right click on it and then wrap the widget with a container. Now I want to be able to give my background a white color. That's why I'm doing this. So now I'm going to go ahead and just click on this to say my width is infinite and my height is infinite. Beautiful. Now if you look, look closely, you'll be able to see the small circle here, all right? And it's gray, okay? So I'll click on it and then I will click to add a child to that container and that child is going to be a column. In that column, I'm going to add an icon, all right? So I'm just gonna search for an icon now and then I click to add the icon. The icon type is going to be a left kind of icon. So if I do this, I will see this and there you go. So I will go ahead and click on the icon itself, come over here, I will see the color. I copy it by just tapping on it and then I will click over here and paste it. Beautiful. Now I have that. If you click outside, you see that there's a column. Let me just zoom it in so you see. So now we have something here, but my icon is not showing properly, right? Because I need to click on the column and center align it, all right? With that, now I have my, you know, my, my, uh, my design like this. It's correct now. So I can go ahead and click on the container itself inside the row and so I'll click here and look at the spacing on the left. It's 20 pixel on the left. So I'll give it a, a padding of 20 pixel on the left. Now observe, this particular design is a bit higher from the top of the screen. So we have a padding of 23 here. So I will go back and give that padding to the row. All right, I'm not giving it to the container. I'm giving it to the row. So I'm gonna give 23. It pushes it down a bit. Beautiful, we're getting there. So now we will just go ahead and copy this particular text. It says hello again. I will copy it here because uh, I couldn't copy it here. I don't know why. So I'll just copy the text here. Look at the property 700 by 32 pixels. I will go back to the Flutter flow and then I'll click on here and then I'll just click to add a child to the column, the main column. That child is gonna be a row. In the row, I'm gonna add uh, a text. And the text is going to be uh, what I had copied before, which says hello again. And the font weight is 700, like what I had memorized. And this is gonna be 23. Beautiful. If we come back here, we see, oh, it's actually 32. I turned it around in my head. So we're going to have 32 here. Beautiful. I will click on here and then click on the main axis alignment to center align it, all right? And then I will try to see the height, the distance between this text and the other container. So it's 11, as you can see. So I will go ahead and say 11. So 11 here, beautiful. Now that I have done that, the next thing I need to do quickly is I'll go ahead and duplicate this one, right? So I just did Control D to duplicate it. 
And then now I'm going to go ahead and copy the text that I hear. It's 400 by 16. So I will paste it first, then I will change the font dimension. It's 400 by 16, so I'll come over here and change it from 700 to 400 and change this one to half of what it was, so 16. And of course, I will center align it. And then, I think that's all. It says, or continue with social media. Let's see, or continue with social media. It's perfect. I think here, the color is more like grayish, not black. So I will come over here and paste the color. I had to copy it from the other side. So now I have this. Okay, so pretty much sweet, right? So um, let's see. I'll continue with. I have a lot of spacing here, right? So this is 30. But meanwhile, mine is not really that properly stretched. Okay, it's not properly stretched. What I could do is I can look at the line height. This is 150% uh, so uh i can i can try to i will come over here and say line height 1.5 well it spreads it a bit and then uh but this doesn't really spread anyways so the thing is this there's some huge space inside here all right so we will just ignore that okay now the next thing we need to do is set up this particular part so we have the text all right so it says the email address and so first of all we're going to click on here we can actually just click this and duplicate it Control d click this and paste it right yes why not we can do that uh oh we have to copy it again okay so i'm copying it again delete all of this mumbo jumbo so i will go ahead and then paste this new one here and then i'll click this and say alignment to the left all right and then i will say the alignment is 20 pixels to the left that's the padding I will call it the col copy the color code and see here the dimension of the font. So 500 by 16. I get to look at a lot of things per time because I, I pretty much want to walk really fast. So I will put here the padding is 20 and then the font weight is 500. The font size is 16, correct? Then the text color is black. So I paste that and now I have this. Hold on. Now we are going to go ahead and look at the padding, the, the, the padding on the top more like the spacing so it's 30 right so i'll click the row itself and give it 30 beautiful now that i'm done with that i will click on the main column itself i'll click on add a chart to widget and then the next thing i need to do is i will add a text field all right so i search for a text field here is a text field and then in my text field there is a, a placeholder here that says xyz at gmail.com i will just copy it and then I will go back to Flutterflow, scroll down. I will see where to put the text content. So here it says label here. So I can just paste that here. Pretty much good. And the next thing is I need to have this background, right? So I will click on it. It's a container actually. So I'll click on it and then I will just copy the color code, right? Go back to Flutterflow. Hold on. Let's look at the height. The height is 48. Beautiful. We don't, we don't really want to worry ourselves about the width. I will right click on the text field and say wrap widget with a container. The container is going to have an infinite width. So I can do something like this. And then I will say infinite width, right? And the height is going to be 48. Beautiful. Then I will click on the text field, right? Okay, hold on. Let's go back to the container itself and give the container a color. So the few color of the container is what I had copied before. So I will just paste it, all right? And this container has a border radius of 14 pixels, okay? So I'll go ahead and then uh, copy it and say 14 pixels here. And also, this has a padding of 20 on both sides, left and right. So I'll go ahead and say 20 here, and then I will say 20 here as well. Beautiful. Now I have gotten this, now I need to click on my text field, scroll down to where we have the decoration, input decoration properties, and I will say none because I don't want you to have any underline or anything. So this is perfect. The next thing I need to do is click on this and see there is a padding of 14 pixels from the text itself and the, the border of the container. So we will come over here, click on the text. If you scroll here, you see the padding says 8 here. We need to change this to 14. Pretty much good. 
Then I think we have the same, we don't have any real serious padding here, so we leave it there. So we have done that and that's pretty okay, okay? So let's go ahead and copy these. Uh, let's go to, let's find the container. This is a container. I'll just copy it, control C, and click on here. Oh, not that. Let me copy the email address first. I copy the email address, click the main column and paste it. This is what we will use for password. So now I'm gonna copy the password and I will click here and then paste it. Okay, so I'm pasting this here, sweet. Then the next thing I need to quickly do is I am going to go ahead and uh, make these possible. So first of all, let's look at the distance here and here is 12 pixels. So let's go correct that. So let's click on the container and say 12 pixels as a padding on the top. And then we can copy this, click on the main column and paste it. Uh, invalid widget. Let's click on it again and control C. All right. Click on the main column and paste it. Good. Now we've done it. But here it's a text field. What I will have to do is I will have to remove this because this is for a password. I'm going to remove it and I will scroll down, right? There is a particular place here where you need to check that this is password field. So I click this to check it. I need to select the, 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 the color of the, 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 the icon here for toggling the password, this. I need to select it so I can use uh, maybe Ascent and then I can say the size is 24, something like that. So it, it's not really showing properly. So let's make it uh, something a bit darker. Maybe this and I say use color. So now we have this, okay? This is pretty okay for me. I can click on these and then pick the real color, all right? Then I can come over here and paste it, all right? So let's just paste this here and enter. All right, so now we have the like exact color, okay? Now our, we also need to, uh, what is it? Let me see, let me see. Keyboard type, uh, this is going to be maybe a visible password, text. I think we can just keep it like this, all right? Now we have this, okay? So uh, the next thing that we need to quickly do is we need to put these. We can actually go ahead and copy this text. So we're not going to learn how to reuse things that we've created. I paste it, control V, and then I will just copy this, come over here and copy it. It's 400 by 12. So I will click here and paste what I had copied and that's it. And then I'll scroll down here and say, change this from 500 to 400 and then I'll make this 12. Okay. Then, uh, I will come back here and copy the color code of that text and then I will paste it here. Beautiful. That's it. I can click on this row now and say go left. All right. So that's the alignment. Then I need to give it a padding of 20 pixels on the right. Oh, actually, yeah. So now that I've gotten that, let's look at the padding in between here. So this is 12. So let's change this from 30 to 12. Okay. Pretty much it. So I believe that you're learning a lot of things. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And thank you very much. And like the video as well. So uh, the next thing that we're going to do right now is this button for signing in. So I will just copy the color code of the button. Look at the height. It's 50 pixel. That's all I need to remember. So I will click here and say button. All right. So now the button, I will go ahead and then paste the few color here. There you go. And then the height is 50 pixels. So I'll say 50 here. And then I will say, I want the width to be infinite. All right. But I'm going to give it a padding of 20 pixels on the left and the padding of 20 pixels on the right. Now, the reason is because when I'm changing my screen sizes, I want my things to spread. Okay. That's like the idea, not be static. Okay. So then I have the border radius is 14 pixels. Let me copy these, uh, the, the text for the button. So my border radius, I will scroll down and change this to 14, right? And then the next thing I need to paste is the content of the text. So it says sign in here. Let me look at the dimension 600 by 14. And here I can just change it from 500 to 600. And then I can change this to 14. Sweet. Then the next thing is just to go ahead and then check the distance from here to here, which says 24. And I will give it a padding of 24 on the top. 
So 24, there you go. The next thing is to go ahead and set up these Google kind of uh, button. How do you do this? Click on the, the, the image here and we're gonna have to export this. Click on export, click on here and say 3x, maybe preview just to be sure and export it. So now it is exported. The dimension is roughly 22 by 22 pixels. And here, let's copy the color code of this container. Now we are gonna go back to Photoflow. Click on the main column itself, click on add a chart to that main column and click on the container. And then uh, you can say infinite width for the container. And uh, I think this is also going to be 50. Yes. And let's paste the fill color. There you go. And I think the border radius is going to be 14 as well. Let's go back. Yeah, it's 14. And then uh, what we need to do is let's copy this text. Uh, this text. So here I will give it a, a padding of 20 pixels on the left, a padding of 20 pixels on the right inside the container because I want things to be you know arranged from left to right I have to add a row inside it so I will say a row okay inside that and then I have to add an image now so this is image that is going to contain the Google icon all right so I will say here uh, 22 that's the width and then here 22 then I will remove the border radius because we don't need a border radius for that change it from network to asset and uh, click over here to upload the image. So here I'm uploading the image and there you go. There you go. Now we have uploaded the image and the, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and click inside the row and add your text widget. So here I click to add the text widget and I will go ahead and paste it. Look for the dimension of my text widget. Let me copy this first. So it says 600 by 14. I would just go ahead and come over here and change it from 400 to 16 to 600 and then paste the text color. There you go. Another thing is to check the padding in between them. It says 14. And so I will give the left padding here to this, the text 14. I want it to be at the center. So what I need to do is go ahead and then click on this to align it to the center. And after that, I will click on this to just see the height difference, the padding on the top. Then I will come back here and click on the container and give it 24. And that's the end of that particular screen. Guys, we've done some really, really amazing job in a couple of seconds. All right. This is the, the sign in screen for our Nike sneaker mobile application. All right. A round of applause for all of us who are currently watching this video. OK, great time. So uh, just to make you see how much of time Flutterflow has saved you, uh, if I told you were writing code, let's just go ahead and then just click on this icon and save view code. All right, so just this particular screen has all of this code. See what you, have, you would have spent time writing just to produce this, but now we just had to use a couple of widgets to just get it done. Beautiful. Okay. Now let's go ahead and then set up another part of our project. Now, this particular uh, part is almost the same as this part. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, oh, we have, act, we have actually not finished, right? So I just discovered that we need to uh, continue working on this one. All right. So let's just quickly do it. Uh, let's come over here, copy the email address part. Control C and uh, click here and paste it. There you go. I will click on here and say Control D to just duplicate the text. The reason is because we have two different texts here. So I will copy from here to here and say Control C and later on I'll come and copy the color code. So I will paste this here and now we have these particular uh, text here. The next thing we need to do is just copy the, the color code and we will scroll down here and paste it. Sweet. Paste that. Aha. Then we can come over here and copy this one that says create account. Let's see. The dimension is 500 by 16 and 500 by 16. So we're doing a pretty good work. Oh, cancel. We will click on here and uh, scroll up, up again and paste it here. 
there you go then uh, let's see 500 by 16 perfect so click on these and center align it and uh, we don't really need this big space in between them so we can just say 4 and 4 is pretty good and uh, let's click on these and see the spacing in between them so it says 135 so I will click here and say 135 Sweet, that's it. So we're done with that part. The next thing we need to just quickly do is uh, we can actually go ahead and replicate this and do this. So I would love to do that, but I would like to even do something even more fun. All right, which is this part. So let's just jump right into this. We will still go ahead and do that. Maybe not in this video, but let's just do something way more fun. All right, so I think this is where I'll get like super excited. So let's try to get it done. First of all, let's start with the this particular row here okay so i will click on this and i will go ahead and just uh, anyways let's start with this so click on this and export it let's click here to export 3x and uh, export is a hamburger icon let's click here to this particular one and then we will go ahead and click on export and then export it 3x go nice now the whole of this is in a row, so we will go back to Flutterflow, click on add a new uh, page, and there we will say create blank, and this is actually going to be our home screen. So we will call this home. We will call this home and we'll say create page. And here I'll click on this and say delete, that's the up bar. And now I need to add a row in my column so I'll click on these and add a row sweet and then I will go ahead and click on this what will I do next let's see what we're gonna do we can go ahead and uh, look at the dimension it's 25 by 18 so let's say 26 by 18 uh, so I'll click on these now and add an image that image dimension is gonna be 20 uh, maybe 26 right by 18 okay so i will have to confirm again so it says here 26 by 18 nice okay then we have this explore and all of that okay so now we have that remove the bother radius change from network to asset so you can actually import an image click here to import the image and the next thing you need to do is go ahead and then select the hamburger icon in your system and that's it so next thing we need to do is click on the row itself don't worry we'll see what we are working on soon in fact, let's, uh, let's uh, see, okay, don't worry, we will get there. Let's go ahead and then make this happen. So first of all, right, we had already done this somewhere else. So let's go back to our signing, uh, oh, onboarding. Okay, uh, was it here? Where did we do this? Uh, we have uh, these, I think in the first page, right? So here it is, so we have text then uh, let's click here to open it so it's best to just copy this thing really okay so not that one uh, maybe this one row no image ah and container okay so this is basically what we copied uh, okay so that's not gonna make sense really Except we put a row, then we put a row inside that. Uh, not, not, not looking so good. So what I'm gonna do now is I will copy the row. Yeah, I will copy the row, this row. I'll say Control C, good. And I will go back to my uh, home page, and I'll click on these and say Add a column. All right, so I'll just add a column inside there. Well, this is just how I want to do it. It will it's gonna work I will paste now that's so big and uh, this row has a padding I need to remove the padding so I remove the padding it has a text here it says uh, that one said welcome this says explore is 700 by 32 so here it said 900 by 30 so let's say 700 by 32 and then uh, it said explore so I'll paste uh, explore here and uh, copy the color code come over here and just paste it okay so I'm pasting it now there you go 
Uh, the next thing that I need to quickly do is, uh, this is the container, right? Container has a, a padding on the top, 15. Uh, okay, and then we have an image here. So let's go ahead and download this particular one. So I click on there and click on export, click on this to say uh, export 3x and then I'll export it. Okay, so the dimension is roughly the same thing, 18 by 18. So now I'll go ahead and click here to import the, the thing I just downloaded. So I'll click in here to import it. And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, great. So I have a, a container here and the container contains my text. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So actually I don't need this container anymore because I was using it before for something. So now I'm just cutting the text out, delete the container and paste my text pretty much. And then I will go ahead and see this, the padding. It's like 14 as well. So let's click here and give the explore text, uh, 14 pixel padding. And I can go ahead and click on my column. Let's see. Okay. Not really. I'm just going to center align everything. So let's go ahead and click on, click on this now. I'm going to add, uh, let's look at it. So we have something here, all right? So it's a circle. Let's come over here and click on it. It's a circle, 44 pixel by 44. All right, so um, I will add a circle in there, basically a container, change it to a circle and say 44, okay? And then I will say inside this container, hold on guys, hold on. So let's zoom in and see what is happening here. So we have, we have a, a row uh, we have a, a container here, like we, we have something here, right? And then the whole of these, okay? All right, I think I see what, this is on top of this circle. And so what we need to do is we'll use a, a stack for these, but now let's just put our, our padlock inside the container. So let's click on the container and add the column, all right? Inside the column, we will add an image which is going to be this image. This image is 24 pixel by 24 pixel. So we'll come over here and change it to 24 pixel. I hope you're learning a lot. I say 24 pixels and I will change this border radius by removing it, yeah. So I will click on the column and click and say center align, beautiful. Click on the image now and go find it. So I have to change it from network to asset. And then I will click to bring it into Flutterflow and this is that thing that I'm bringing into Photoflow. So now I'm good, I'm doing a great job. Well, we are doing this job together. So now on the container itself, I will right click on it and wrap the, the container, which is the widget with a stack. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I need to put this small, tiny, beautiful red circle on top of the big circle here, the white circle. So let me copy it. The circle is eight pixel by eight pixel. So I will just go ahead and click on the stack now and say container and say circle and then change this to eight. All right, change a few color to these. There you go. And also I will look at the, 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 the padding from the left here. So it says 34, okay? So I will say, let's go. It's gonna be 34. Pretty, let me click out so you can see what we've done. We've done that. Now also there is some, uh, there is some, uh, okay, I think we're pretty much good, but, but we need to do something. So there's a padding of three pixels above. So I need to still come over here and say three pixel above, three pixel, a little bit. So with that, I have these, I can click on this now and say, come on, spread it. Well, that didn't really work out very fine. Let's go ahead and use something else like this. Okay, this is now the real thing. It's, it's, it's not doing it very well. Or we can even use this one, preferably. And then let's go ahead and look at the padding from the top. It's roughly 10 pixels. So let's say 10 pixels, 10 pixels from the top. And then let's click on these and give it a padding from the left and the right. So if you click on this is 20, and I think the same thing with these is 20. So we will say uh, 20 pixels from the left here. And then this one, we have to select the container itself. In fact, we select the stack. 
Okay, so we will now say 20 on this, all right? Perfect. Okay, yeah, that was an ascent there. Okay, so now we have that particular thing. Let's go ahead and then continue working. So the next thing we need to do is this search field here. And uh, let's go ahead and just achieve some things. Now, if you click on this particular thing, right? This is a big circle. Let's start with this one. So we have this container, it's white. And uh, we'll, 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 we will fix the, 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 the width as to, no, no, we won't fix the width, we just fix the height. So uh, let's just go ahead and set it up. So first of all, it's gonna be inside a row. So I click on it and say row. Inside the row, I will say uh, container. All right, the container is going to be an infinite width. Okay, there's a problem there, it crashed because I need to change this to this expansion and then say, okay, yes, now go ahead and give me infinite width. Then the height is 52 pixels. I will say uh, here, I will say 52 pixels and uh, the border radius is going to be 14 pixels. Uh, let's see, let's scroll down and look for the border radius. So, so it's gonna be 14 pixels. Okay, good. Then the padding on the left, I am sure is gonna be 20. All right, now, yeah, you can confirm it now. So now we've done that, let's go ahead and do this one first. So this is a big circle, it's 52 pixels as the diameter. So I can click and just copy the color. And then in the row, okay, I will click to add a child to that row, say container, turn the container into a circle, then say 52 here. Then change the secondary background color to these. There you go. Then we will go ahead and click on these and add a column inside it. In the column, we will add uh, an image, all right? That image we have not downloaded yet. So this is the image. It's 24 pixel by 24. Now let's export it, okay? Pretty good. So I'll click on these and say 3X, export it. And then we will come over here and change it to uh, 24. All right, by 24. Then remove the border radius and change from network to asset. Then bring in your image by importing it. So I'm waiting for a couple of seconds then click on it and then I bring it into Flutterflow. Nice, I have done that. Now I have to click on these and see the padding in between them. I can hold on Alt just to see it. So it says 14. Uh, okay, now this is here. I'll click on the column first and center align it. Beautiful. Then I will click on the container and give it a padding of 20 pixels on the right. I'll click on my big container here and give it a 14 pixel spacing in between the two of them because that's what I saw here in the design. So if I do like this, I see it. Okay. Now the next thing is this thing. Okay, so I'll click on this vector image and export it. So click here. Export it, 3x, go. Then here is 14 by 14, so I'll say 15 by 15. Now inside the container, observe, this is in a row. So we have to put things, we have to put a row widget inside the container first. And then we have to go ahead and, and add uh, an image, which is gonna give us, uh, the image is gonna give us, uh, the dimension is, uh, 14 by roughly 15 pixels. So we will say 15 pixels by 15 pixels. And we will say border radius goes to zero. And uh, what else? Change from network, so asset. I believe we have exported the, the image, so we have to come here and import it now. Uh, we didn't, okay, we didn't. We have to come here and export it. Oh, it's giving me as a zip file. I don't like zip files. Okay, so uh, I don't know why it did that to me. Okay, so let's go ahead and come here and change from here and say all files. So now we will see this the file. We will say, uh, I'll just cut this out here and click on new folder and say uh, images. Uh, then I will open it. I will paste what I cut out, then right click on it and say extra files here. Pretty much it. And then I'll click to open it, click again and click this and update. 
Okay, so now I have that image and then I will see the padding here is 26 pixels. Yeah, so I will say 26 pixels, 26 pixels here. Then click on the text, the row, and add a text field, all right? So a text field is what we are adding because that's a place where you search for something. So I add a text field. It says here, looking for shoes. So I will just copy this. It's 500 by 12. So I will scroll down and paste my label text here. And there you go. Uh, 15 by, 500 by 12. So here, and change this to 12. Okay, then scroll down, go to input decoration, uh, and change from underline to none. And that's it. That's how to go. And then the spacing here is 12, so change the padding on the left here from 8 to 12. You're adding an extra 4, okay? Beautiful. Now we're actually done with that particular part. Let's go ahead and click on these and see the spacing uh, between them. So it's 22 pixels, so I will click on the row here and say 22 pixels. Beautiful. Do you get a gist? All right, that's how it's done. Now you see it's not really looking all so beautiful. Well, the reason is because we need to wrap this column, the main column, with the container and then give it infinite properties. So width is infinite and height is infinite. Sweet. Okay, there's a little problem. I can't even see my text field again. So I will come over here to the container and then uh, this is my container. I will go ahead and then copy Click on here and copy the color. Okay, it's the same thing actually. So, um, where is it? Uh, I think it's the same color really. And uh, But what I need to do now is I need to give it an elevation. So let's just say two. Yeah, so now I can see my text in a way, my container elevation. So uh, I can say uh, uh, one just to not make it so intense. All right, so like this is okay. Come on guys, it's, it's pretty okay. Um, I think that's about it. The next thing we need to do is text, then buttons and text, and then all of that. Then we just fix it up. Let's go ahead and set this up. So I will copy this, select category, and click on these, right? Click on the add a child to the column and go row. And in the row, we're gonna add a text widget. And the text widget's content is what we had copied before. So I'll paste it here. And it's 600 by 16. I will copy the color code, scroll down, change this from 400 to 600 by 16. I believe that was it. Primary text, paste the color that I copied, and uh, give it a padding of 20 pixels on the left. There you go. Click on the row itself because we need to determine the padding on the top. It's 24 pixels. And so we say 24 pixels. That's it. Next thing is buttons. So let's see, the buttons width here is not a problem. We will make it responsive. So we will say only the height is what we want to remember. But first of all, I will copy the, the, the text here. I'll copy the text here for all shoes. And I click on here. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. The, the height is 40 pixels. So click on here and that's the main column and add a row to the main column then we will click on uh, what is it called we'll click on the button all right and the next thing we need to quickly do is let's see uh, i think i copied it right all shoes right and it's a uh, it's a uh, it's white so let's click on here and say white uh let me see white right white um okay so actually the background is not really white actually i think i just uh i think i i need to just uh click on this container and clear the color the main container that wraps everything just clear the color click on these clear the color for now yeah so we can go ahead and and click on these to the main container Remove the elevation, all right? So elevation zero, all right? Then the container here, the button here, elevation zero. Nice. Then inside that, we are going to, uh, what do we do? Let's see, let's see, let's see. 
uh, the border radius is not known. Okay, now that's weird. I don't have. I don't get to see the border radius here. Uh, a bit weird. But I think this is going to be. Let me turn this off. And see, uh, the border radius is like eight pixels. Okay, so I think we will say eight pixels. It's already eight here. And uh, let's click on this and copy the text. Let's come over here and copy the text, the color of the the text. So all shoes, it's a uh, 400 by 12. So click here, change it to 400, and change this to 12. All right, sweet. Then we have this button, Control D, to duplicate the button and this one is blue so copy it the height is already 40 so we're good so uh click on it and give it a few color blue paste it and uh the the text color let's copy the text first and uh, we will paste the text here then we will go ahead and change this from black okay from black to white Okay, and uh, let's look at this. We have some padding in between. So let's click these and say this is 16. All right, so uh, I think I will just give it to these and say padding on the right hand side of this is 16. And so this one too, the padding on the right hand side is going to be 16 as well. And then I can click on this and say Ctrl D to duplicate. This one is going to be 20. All right, so 20. But now let's look at something. Uh, okay, so, well, I can't really tell whether this was a carousel or not, but I will copy this particular one and just paste it here. All right. Uh, okay, that's a lot of changes. Let's click on these and put this color. I don't know. Was it black? This one? Use. Then uh, the few color goes back to white. Okay. What I'm going to do here is click on this expansion, all right, and say infinite width. You will see why I'm doing what I'm doing. Do the same thing with this one. Click on the expansion here and say infinite width, all right. They're now adjusting by themselves. So click on these and give this one a padding of 20 on the left and say expansion in the middle like this. And then we will say width infinite. Okay, beautiful. So now all of them are... You know, having like, okay, this guy is already compressed inside. Uh, outer, Tanis, okay. Um, this has more content than these. Okay, now this is not gonna really favor them that much. Yeah, because this one is bigger and this one is like all shoes. Uh, 400 by 12. Uh, let's see, let's see. This. Uh, and then this, okay. All right, so now that doesn't really favor me so much. So I think I will change it. I will undo it. I'll just undo what I just did. Uh, but let's give these uh, 20 pixels, okay? So I will leave it like this, just for this one, all right? The rest will have what I had done. I'll click on these. And um, look at the padding, it's 16. Yeah, okay, so uh, let's say 16. Then, next thing I need to do quickly is uh, click on these and copy it, Ctrl C, click on this and paste it. And then uh, copy this, go to the select category and paste it. And over here, we, we need to go ahead and copy this. Uh, click on this. No, let's click on this and say Ctrl D. Click on this and uh, put it like this. So I will click on this and give it a padding of 20 pixels on the right. All right. Then I will copy this C all and paste it over here. Uh, paste it over here. Then I will copy the color code, 
let's see it's 500 by 12 so uh, click here and change it to 500 change this to 12 okay then paste this here and uh, that's about it this is already fine 500 by 16 that's okay so we've gotten that and uh, we're pretty good at what we're doing guys so we will just go ahead and do this then we duplicate with this and that's it and uh, we're pretty much doing really fine right so this is a, a really amazing job that we're doing uh, this is just me teaching you UI complex UI if you ask me uh, the next thing I need to do here is click on this for this particular part this is where we're gonna you know take things to another level so here the container is 157 the width and by 201 so I'll click on this first and say a row this is gonna be in a row yeah and in the row we're gonna have a container whose height is 157 and uh, this is gonna be 201 201 okay so I think that's what I saw right 157 uh, 201 yes border radius is 16 pixels border radius is 16 pixels there you go and then uh, we have a couple of things we need to start setting into place so these there's a column inside this container, so let's go ahead and add a column because things are being stacked from top to bottom. So there's a column here. Next thing we need to do is a row for these beautiful hearts. So let's export the heart first. Uh, that's like the favorite icon, I think. And it's uh, basically 15 by 15 pixels. So I will click on the, the, the column, click and add a child to that column, then add a row. In the row, I'm gonna add an image. I'm adding another child to the to that. And then it's gonna be 15 pixel by 15 pixels. So I'm saying 15 here, and I'm saying 15 here. Okay, then I will say zero for border radius. Click on here and say asset. And then I will go ahead and click on here and bring up the uh, image I just downloaded which is uh, the heart and then that's it so I have this pretty much it I will go ahead and see the padding from the top and the left so what I'll do is I'll give it to the column so I give the column a padding of 12 from here and give it a padding of 12 from the left I think I'll do the same thing for the right now everything that is inside it will have the same dimension so it's it's everything is planned guys really planned Oh, there is going to be a problem, a little problem towards this side. Yes, there's going to be a problem. So I think uh, th the reason why we're going to have a problem is because this guy doesn't need that padding. So we will have to remove the padding from the right. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and get our image for the shoes. So export. Click here. 3x. Preview. Good. Exported. Ooh, this is not gonna give us in a zip file. Anyways, it's okay. All right, so it's a uh, one one six by by fifty three. So let's go ahead and click on here and add an image. Uh, the image is one one three. Uh, let's see here, one one three by fifty. I think fifty five. Fifty. Three, right so but I think it will still work let's remove the border radius and click on network change it to asset and there you go we are going to bring in the image so let's say here all files because what we exported is a zip file then go to images and paste this replace it no problems click on this and right click and say export here uh, where is it okay right click extract all it's not asking me to extract it here so extract anyways uh, Nike store images yes just extract it here so now I have this and then I have uh, this thinks this should be the item so I'm I'll bread it in uh, I'll wait for it to show 
there you go, it's showing. Uh, the next thing I need to do quickly is, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, let me see something, what is happening here? Okay, so I have all of this. Okay, well, we're not getting perfect, perfect scenario, but we will get there. Now we need to put up our row and then this one, one too. So let's copy this. The font size is uh, 500 by 12. Let's click on the column itself and we will add a row. Okay, in the row we're going to add a text. Okay, then we will add a, we will add a, let's go ahead and add what we copied here, right? Bestseller, 500 by 12. 500 by 12 by 12 uh, great then the color is I'm copying it here and uh, I'm gonna paste it here good I'll click on the row and control D to duplicate it and then I'm gonna copy the Nike pad here Nike Jordan and uh, I will go ahead and click here click on here to paste it uh, and then we will go ahead and copy this click on here and uh, paste this sweet then click on here as well uh, the the padding is four okay so uh, I give it four here let's look at the padding for this one it's more like 12 so click on here and give it a padding of 12 all right, so let me zoom in a bit so that you can see what we are doing. All right, so uh, now that I have gotten this, uh, the next thing I need to do is this particular pricing thing here. So here, all right, is going to be a row, yes. So I will say, um, copy this, Control C, click on this and paste it. Now in here, is going to be the total price so it says 500 by 14 so i'll click on here and paste what i had copied from the figma design 500 by 14 and it has a color code i copy it and then i paste the text color right now uh there's some things i need to do so here is a design i can't create it in flutter flow all right, so what I'll need to do is export it uh, 3x and export it like this. It's another group. Ooh. Uh, okay, so no problem. So the dimension is 34 by 36. So I will click on the row, uh, click on added child to the row and say image. And then the image is gonna be 30, 34 by 36. Uh, 34 by 36 remove the border radius change from network to assets click to actually import it change this to all files go back to your downloads and then you will see the the file uh, okay so all files I can't see the file so let's see I thought I had exported it. Nike sneaker store. Okay, okay, it is. Uh, click on this. All right, so this is going to be it. I don't know which one it is. So click on here and change all files. So click here, ex cut it out from there, put it in your folder. This is where I put it. Uh, right click and uh, I, th I think I see extract all. And it's asking me to extract here. I'm extracting it there. And uh, uh, I think I have the folder now. Uh, I don't know whether that's the image, but let's just upload it. I'm not sure. Okay, it is. So I have it like this and it's pretty okay. So I'll click on the row noun and say this way. All right, pretty much good. So now I'm going to go ahead and push this guy down. Oh, it's not responding. All right, so let's click on this and take it off. Uh, let's see what is happening. Uh, I need to push this one totally down. 
Okay, so I will go ahead and uh, uh, cut. No. Okay, I can actually just do some padding here, guys. Let me see. What about the shoes? Does the shoe have any height? It doesn't. Uh, I will go ahead and just, uh, let me see. This has like a padding of 12, but I don't think 12 is gonna help us. So let's say 12 is not helping us. So I'm gonna just use something like 35. And uh, worst case scenario, 40. No, 40 is too much, 37. Uh, pretty much there, not totally there yet. So we will say 38, why not? But now I, I feel there is something missing because this image is not like properly big enough. Like it's not big enough because it's supposed to be like super big. Here and here is 20 pixel, right? So I, uh, let me click on here and, uh, okay, so I said 12, so let's say 20. Uh, okay, and then here, let's remove uh, eight, all right? So let's say zero, okay? And then uh, this image is actually not as big as I wanted it to be, right? So it's not as big as I wanted it to be. Yeah, it's not giving me the vibe that I wanted it to have. Uh, I wanted it to be just like really big, but it's not. So I think uh, I might have to download it again. Uh, there is no real way to download it. Okay, so I will do something here. So um, if I download this, well, let me just try it. 3x exports this. The frame size here is 137 by 97. So 137, uh, 137 by 97. 97. Okay, pretty much larger now. Pretty much larger now. So I think, uh, I think it's okay now, really. But it's like really large. Uh, I don't have a lot of space again below. Uh, here, I don't have a lot of space. Uh, this was supposed to be really 12. Okay, but there is no space at all again for it. Um, let me, I will just have to alter things a bit. Let's change this to 12. Okay, and um, let's change this to maybe four, okay? All right, and um, let's see. Let's change this height to uh, 77, okay? Uh, no, I think I like it a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's about it. And uh, these, okay, these can be six. Uh, maybe seven. All right, I'm altering it a bit and it's okay. So now I have this kind of design and uh, it's perfect for me, you know. So I will go ahead and then click on this and uh, look at it. I don't know whether this is a carousel. It doesn't look like a carousel per se. So I will just not make it a carousel. I will just say, uh, give it a padding of 20 on the left. And then I will say control D to duplicate. All right, and that's about it. All right, so I will click on the row itself and give it some padding from the top. Well, let me click on this one first. Padding is 16. And then I will say 16 from the top. So pretty much. All right, so we've gotten a good design here, if you ask me. And uh, the next thing we need to do quickly is click on this and copy it, scroll down, click on this and paste it. All right, and then the next thing I need to do is click on this to copy new arrivals and paste this here. All right, and then I will go ahead and copy this. Uh, let's paste this here. Okay. Okay, so see all was already there actually. <laughs> all right, so we don't have a lot of things left then to create this very nice swag thing here. So let's go ahead and click to create this container, all right? So the container's height is uh, 95, so let's focus on that. So let's click on here, 
and uh, we're going to add uh, a container the height is 95 95 the width is infinite all right let's see can we get that right yes we can why not uh, I think the border radius is 16 pixels so we click here and say 16 pixels padding on the left is gonna be uh, 20 and on the right the same thing 20 and then we're going to have to start setting up things inside it so uh, first of all let's do things one by one okay so these set of stars are going to just be uh, stacks like things we put in the stack okay so um, and even the shoes yeah it's gonna be like a stack I think so uh, let's go ahead and then set it up how do we get this done guys I don't know what do we do okay so let's uh, copy this and uh, this is a summer cell path so this is gonna be a long row okay so let's put a row inside there let's just do it one by one we get stocked we good we get to find a way around it so good I put a row there and the thing I need to do now is put a column here in the column I'm gonna you know this is like a, a column so things are stacked on top of themselves so I have a column there in the column I will go ahead and add a, a row and in the row uh, I will add a text and uh, the text is what I had copied okay so I will just paste it here it says uh, summer cell uh, 500 by 12 okay uh, let's see uh, scroll down come over here and change it to 500 and change this to 12 sweet and then what, what next we're just going to go ahead and click on the row and duplicate it so we can put the next thing that is here so is this 15 percent well, it's really large text I like it then it's a uh, 900 by 36 so I'll click on here and paste it so I will just paste it here and uh, it's 900 by uh, I don't know 30 something 900 by 36 and so I will say 36 really big and then I can go ahead and copy this uh, and paste it all right so go click on the column itself and say bring my stops to the left alignment I just clicked on that there you go and then I will go ahead and click on maybe these and see the padding. It says here maybe 20 pixels, all right? But what I would do is click on the row, right? And just say center align everything for me. And uh, what else? Uh, okay, the column itself, I want it to center align it for me. That's it. Uh, no, no, no. For the row, bring, bring it back to what it was, this particular alignment. And then we need some padding on the left, so 22. So uh, let's give it to the column, 22. There you go. So we have that. Now uh, this is a different font. It says Futura. So we can come over here for this one and maybe click on here and search for Futura. Futura. I don't know. Do we have something like that? Futura, we don't. It's a it's a custom function, not a custom function. Custom font. Okay. So we 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 now have this. Okay. So let's just set things up. This is our beautiful sneaker, all right? So I'll just click to export it. And uh, 3x. Let's preview just to be sure. Okay. Nice. We have a sneaker downloaded. It's a 111 by 90 by 100 okay so how do we do this first of all we can add everything here right so I wouldn't want us to even use a, a, a stack for that one so let's add this entire row let's wrap it with the row right I, I don't know is that possible can we get it right I don't think so it didn't work so um, so what I'm gonna do is click on the container itself all right and cut it out right then put a row first so sometimes when you want to wrap it with a row it doesn't work so I just cut it out create the container create the row and then paste it inside pretty much it's working now you see so uh, now that I've done that this uh -oh. 
uh, this is actually inside um, okay okay it's not gonna work what I thought was gonna work is not actually gonna work so control Z let's take it back to what it was all right so this is it and uh, yeah come on guys we have to put it in rapid in the stack I wanted to try another way but it's okay let's uh, let's right click on it and wrap it in a stack uh, the first stack here is gonna be an image uh, image is 113 113 by 100 so by 100 remove the border radius okay and then let's change from network to assets and import the image we're almost done. The last part is just to make the navigational scenario, okay? So we will just bring up the image, okay? Let's look at it. It has a padding of 191 pixels from the left. I had to hold down my Alt key to see that. Okay, so uh, now it's uploaded, uh, waiting for it to show. Click on this and say 191. It goes right up there and uh, scroll down here come to the container all right give the container some padding on the top so uh, i think we would do something like this it's 20 pixels so let's just say 20 pixels all right from the top push it down pushing the container downwards all right so now we have this kind of vibe okay so we have this kind of vibe and uh, we're pretty much cool now so we can do other things like these stars we can just add it to the stack okay so let's go ahead and then export the stars and do it we might not just add everything but I'm just gonna do a couple then you can add the remaining yourself so this is a star it's a fifth that's a 16 pixel by 16 pixel so I'm gonna have to find my stack this is my stack I'm gonna add a, an image so this is the image I'm adding uh, the width is just gonna be 15 the height is going to be 15 there is no border radius and uh, network to asset click on here to bring up the image the star okay so there you go uh, these is gonna be 60 from the top and 8 from the left so uh, okay hold on it's not six it's a uh, 28 from the left and 60 from the top so we can actually say here 60 uh, and then maybe 28 well it's not really giving us the correct thing uh, so let's make these 80 all right well, anyways don't forget we've done some extra job there okay so roughly about that and then for these control D and let's click on this and then let's go ahead and then maybe for this one so uh, we will have 150 on the left we will say 150 150 and then we will just take off these say 20 all right okay pretty much it so you can add the remaining just to tush up the whole thing you can add these other part and just make things up so now the next thing I need to do here is this part so first of all let's click on this and download it I just hope this doesn't export as uh... oh come on it's it's just my nightmare so uh, click on this and then export uh, export uh, export it's not really a nightmare actually I just don't like it like that so export this again I will just go out and export all of them so click on this uh, export go and then this uh, scroll down uh, export go click on this and uh, let's scroll down look for export and uh, that's it this is it just be sure that um, so I will go ahead and export it all right so now that we have that 
the next thing we need to do is just set things up for ourselves okay so uh, here click on this and then I need to do something different here all right so we want this thing to always be sticking to the bottom here so what we need to do is we will wrap this column with a stack all right that's the only way around it and then in the stack now we can add a container uh, not necessarily a container we can we can yeah yeah a container so that we can put something on top of it so a container and uh, the container is going to be stick to the bottom here this is it so I had to click on this to stick it to the bottom align to the bottom permanently and then uh, I will look at the rough dimension of this thing is 375 by 106 so I will just say infinite width and then these I will say uh, 106 okay and then what I'm gonna do now is I will go ahead and come to background image and change it from network to asset and uh, click this to upload the image aha uh -huh. there you go so we have this I will just upload the image wait for a couple of seconds and we will see the image okay it's there now it's there actually it's the image is there okay so we have an image here uh, okay but uh, we need to clear the color of the container so we click here to clear the color now we can see our our the image we brought in now we need to just put some things inside it so click on the click on the container uh, I click on the container and then add a row uh, the row is going to be what we have we're going to put uh, images now like icons so I will say I images all right so let's look at it uh, this is uh, 22 by 24 so let's just say here 22 by uh, 24 and then we will go ahead and take this off okay so we will say uh, yeah that's that's about it now let's go get all our pictures so uh, we will come over here and change this to assets and click here to start getting all the anyways I just wish they were direct images it would have made things very easy okay so let's go ahead and say all files uh, this is like the first thing I have so control X go to images like where you always put your your files I will just export it I will do them one by one just so that I don't get to uh, make any mistake and uh, I think uh, I don't know where is it so this should be yeah this should be it uh, outline this uh, let's just click on this to say large icons I needed to see what I'm selecting so that's it so now that I have that okay I will say uh, control D all right to duplicate it just select it and say control D again aha so uh, I will go back again to get the other things all right so go back to images go back to downloads say all files uh, pick this one X go to images I will just do them one by one just so that I don't get to make any mistake right click and say extract all extract all so now we have it in four right so let's look for four so hard and there you go the next thing that we need to do wait for a couple of seconds let's get that right control D aha uh, uh -huh. then we need the next thing here which is going to be uh, let's just go ahead and duplicate all of them at once so here I click on this I need to go get something else okay so uh, click on this and say all files uh, click on this and X control X to so cut uh, I will paste it here right click sorry this is wasting a lot of time but it's okay most persons might learn how to do this for the first time which is pretty much good I am just here to teach all right 
all right so then uh, we're almost there okay so this is the last one we're gonna do so click on this uh, and then bring it up or uh, go to images go to downloads change it from image to all files cut these out screw down and then paste it it's a pretty boring process I know I know you could just speed this over and get to where I am done with it okay so because uh, cutting these files is always pretty difficult and I don't want you to lose out on anything so I don't really do so much of editing in my videos okay so uh, I will go ahead and upload this and then uh, let's look at it okay so I will say row noun we're, we're almost done so row noun then I will say uh, space it evenly all right but you see this is not uh, this is like grouped together and this is grouped together okay all right so how do we do that let's click on this and right click and wrap these in a row yes I will show you why I'm doing what I'm doing then I'll click on this and cut it all right and click on these identify the row that I added it into then paste this one okay then let's try to see how I can give them a padding the padding is 41 pixels so I will say uh, I will say 41 here 41 beautiful then this one I will right click on it and wrap it in a row okay then I will click on this and cut it this out click on this and look for the row that I've put it inside and paste it and then I will say click on this one and give it a, 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 a padding of 41 too right that's that's about it and then uh, we, we're pretty doing a good job and so what else we will just go ahead and uh, click on this noun and do something like this space across and then now I'll click on the row here and look at the padding on the left click on this and say here this is 31 pixels so I can say here 31 pixel all right then for this one I would just say 31 pixel as well okay so pretty much we have something fantastic here so I can click on this and say padding on the bottom is 30 pixel so we can click on the row and say lie down on the bottom and then I will say 30 pixels okay so pretty much I'm arranging it now so that's how to go ahead and then set up this navigation button for your application all right then we have the last part which is this big circle uh, if this is which is this big circle I will scroll down like scroll up and I would just pick this one uh, this container click on this open it uh, I think this is wait a minute I can't see which uh, this is a column it should be inside a container okay so this is it Control C then scroll down and uh, so I'm supposed to have uh, I'm supposed to have I'm supposed to have something here so uh, I will just go ahead and then add that immediately uh, meanwhile I think uh, I think I'm gonna have to end the tutorial here uh, what we just need to do here is just to add this particular part and so I think we will go ahead and add it in the next tutorial but I hope that you learned a whole lot of things from these tutorials so don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel like this video as well in the next part we will just complete this I wouldn't like to rush in it because we need to just uh, get it really really right all right and so we've spent a lot of time on this already so let's go ahead and get to do this in the next part of the tutorial see you in part three subscribe to this channel like this video let me see your comments thank you very much hello guys welcome to another video tutorial by no code africa in this tutorial we're going to learn how to build a nike sneaker store mobile application without writing codes using flutterflow so we've done the part one and part two and today we are going to be working on the part three now this particular tutorial series is mainly for front-end development within Flutterflow. but just like i said in the part one and i think i said it in part two if i get a lot of comments about uh building the back end for the application i will consider making 
the the part that includes the backend for the application so let's get right into it see you okay guys let's do this so this is where we stopped in the previous tutorial and we are just going to continue from here and then start building more screens for this project this is the ui for the project all credit goes to the ui ux designer who worked on this project and made it available for free on figma community okay so we're going to just go ahead and start building some things right and um, let's see what we're going to do so what we didn't do in the last time was this particular button here right the the center button right so this is like cart i think yeah so let's go ahead and set this up how do we do this so uh the very first thing we need to do is we need to bring this particular icon here the same way we brought this particular thing here all right so let's go ahead and do that uh here we will just go ahead and click on our stack all right and we will go ahead and then uh add a row right yes we're gonna add a row okay so great now i need you to learn some things here right so um i'm adding a row there and the next thing i'm going to add is i'm going to add a container all right and then in the container this is going to be the size of the container is 56 pixels by 56 pixels so i'll just click here to copy the color code all right and then i will click here to change the container to a cycle okay then change these to 56 so I say five, six here and click here as well to change the color to these. And thereafter, I'm going to go ahead and click on the element here. Okay. And just scroll down, go to export, uh, change this to, let's say three X preview first, just look at it. And then I have it. Well, it's a zip file, but it's okay. The size here was 24 pixel by 24. So in my container, I'm going to add a column. All right, so I'm just gonna add a column there. And then the column is gonna have an image, all right? So I'm gonna click over here and then add an image. The image is gonna be 24 pixels by 24 pixels, which was the dimension that we saw on the Figma design. Okay, so we have here 24 pixels as, as well. And uh, we will take off this uh, border radius. We will click here to change it from network to asset so that we can actually import the image. So I'll click on here just to bring in my image and then uh, now the file that I had you know exported is a zip file so I click on all files so that I can get it this is it I'll just say Control X to cut it take it to the folder where I put different images then I'll just paste it so it's telling me the destination already has a file so I will just say replace the file remember it's three so uh, I replace the file and I will look for three this should be three right uh yes let me just be sure that that's three okay so this is the one that we should use so i'm using the time as well to just be sure okay so i'm just going to go ahead and say extract all and say extract now i've extracted that and uh, let me just close this and go to where i can find it all right so i think it's going to be inside here so let's click and open these. There's outline. I don't know. This is not it. Let's try linear bags. Uh, let's change this to large. This is the icon. So we'll click on these and then click on open. And then now we have it inside Flutterflow. Well, that's a lot of process. You can just uh, find ways to simplify it for yourself. But that's just how to get it inside here. Then I'll click on here to center align it. And then now I have this. I will click on my main row to center align it okay guys this is very important i click on my main row to center align it the next thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to push this thing to the bottom now i push it to the bottom you see here it's actually coming to the bottom right now i had to click here to say go to the bottom of the of my screen and then what i need to do is i need to go ahead and like you know give it some padding from the bottom so I'll click on here and see the distance is like says here 450. So I will give uh, a padding of 50 pixels to my row. So now I have these, uh, you know, scenario here correctly done. All right. So this is 56, right? And this is also 56. Okay. So now I have a perfect design for my, uh, for my application and everything fits now. All right, if I come over here, 
go to the container i just want to confirm that it's yeah it's correct it's 56 and so that's it so even even if we switch and say uh 430 right so we will still have you know the same kind of arrangement all right so even if we changed it it's still the same thing right so um this particular one we can just alter things a bit if we want to yeah we can alter things a bit here if we want to just so that if we change screens this can just expand perfectly so let's let's do that quickly now so for this container what i'm going to do here is i'll click on expansion and i will say infinite right so i'm telling it always take the maximum space you have so i'm clicking on this one the container here and i'm telling it the same thing aha uh -huh. then i'm saying infinite and then i'm going to give a padding here of 20 on the right all right so that every single screen that i move to it will just adjust it so when you're building your app you need to make sure that you're preparing for mobile responsiveness okay I believe you've learned a whole lot of things so far, right? So please remember to just click on the like button, like this video so that YouTube can show more people this video. And also please click to subscribe to this YouTube channel because with this channel, you can learn how to build mobile and web apps without writing codes, okay? Now let's go back to uh, our Figma design and then we can start working on a couple of things. Okay, so this is going to require us to do some complex things, right? And I didn't want to make this video very long, so we will just skip this one for now. And we will implement this in the next video, all right? So what I'm going to rather do is I'm going to try to implement these and also this, all right? Let's see how we can quickly get this done. Okay, so for this part, we already have uh, something that looks like it. So let's just click on, this is a favorite screen. So let's come over here and click on the button to add a new page. Click here to create blank and call this screen favorite, okay? So favorite and we say create page. Uh, we'll delete this up bar and uh, let's go back to home, right? And we're going to, uh oh, let's see onboarding, uh, sign in. Yeah, so I think we have this here in sign in. So let's just copy this and take it to favorite and click on the main column and paste it. Control V to paste. All right, and then we have these, right? So uh, I will just copy this text, favorite, and uh, it's 600 by 16. I'll come over here and click on my row, click to add a child to that row. The child is gonna be a text, and then I'm going to go ahead and add the text here at once. All right, so if I scroll down now, I'm going to just go ahead and change this from 400 to 600 and change this to 16. Perfect. Then, okay, sorry about that. I was trying to turn off notifications for messages. All right, so uh, now the next thing we're going to just quickly do here is we're going to go ahead and click on the row and add, uh, what are we gonna add now? So we're going to add an image, okay? So the image is going to be this one. Well, not really an image yet. We need to add a container. So uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and come over here, click on these and click on these and change it to, uh, what, what do we change this to? This is 44 pixels, okay? And uh, this is going to be, no, this is not gonna be an image. Let's just delete this particular image. All right, then let's go ahead and click to add uh, something else. Let's add uh, a container first. So this is the container that we're adding. And then what we're going to add next is, uh, we're going to just go ahead and add, uh, check the, the, the container size, okay? So, so here I will save 44 pixels and change this to circle, all right? And then inside the container, I'm going to go ahead and add something inside it. So let's add a column inside it. And inside that, I'm going to add an image. All right. So the image is going to be the image of this heart. So here, I just clicked on it. And I wish it is not going to give me the file in the zip scenario. It is, unfortunately. Okay. So here we have this. It's 24 pixels by 24. So I'll change here to 24 pixels by 24 pixels, okay? Then I will just remove the border radius here, just take it off, and change this from network to assets, 
scroll down and click to add this uh let's go to downloads and changes from image to files okay so i will just click on this and cut it right take it to where i always put the images uh i think this time around i'll just do something else really fast so let's just say today okay yes so today now i'm pasting it here and i will just go ahead and extract it uh inside here and there you go okay so i have that i will just open this and i think i should be able to see my image okay so heart that's the heart and i will wait for a couple of seconds for it to get uploaded fully and uh, now that's uploaded i click on the column and center align it then i will click on here and use this particular alignment what I need to do now is click on these, click on the container, give it a padding of 20 from the right. All right, so now we have something similar to what we have here, which is good. So we will just try to implement this screen and just make the tutorial really short, okay? Uh, I think we will go ahead and do this in the next tutorial. So let's, uh, let's just quickly finish this one up. And then the next thing we would do here is, uh, I think if we do one, we've actually done all of it. And so that means this doesn't take a lot of time. Okay, so um, here, let's go ahead and just click on here. And uh, what I'm going to do next is quite simple. I'm just going to add a row. In the row, I'm going to add, um, what am I gonna add? I'm gonna add a container. The height is 159 by 203. So I'll add, uh, a container all right this is a container and I would say 159 by 203 okay so uh, this container has some border radius of 14 pixels and so yes I will just give it a border border radius of 14 pixels here and then what else am I going to do I will just go ahead and start setting things up let's zoom in to see what we're really having here so we have uh, a container here uh, if you observe if you try to draw a line here this is somehow mixed with this so we're gonna have to use a stack to get this in this place so let's put the image first then we can put these particular ones so let's put this image first so I will go ahead and download the image click to export and say 3x or yeah 3x anyone and uh, now that gives me that I will click on these hearts to download it it's going to give me the file in zip unfortunately okay so uh, yeah true and then what I'm going to do next is uh, click on this big circle or don't worry just let that one be this is 116 by so I think what do I use to know the real this okay let's do this 116 by 53 let's go ahead and add a column inside this container first all right because things have been stacked from top to bottom so a column inside now let's add an image all right so there's an image noun and the image dimension is 116 by 53 so let's say 116 by uh, 53 okay and then I will just say zero for this uh, changes from network to assets and click this to just uh, go get your uh, image so this is my image uh, it's gonna show my image soon this is my image let me see the real size of this thing it's saying 473 by 339 I might use that so uh, 473 by 339 yeah that might be just perfect uh, let me see okay let's use it 473 let's see will it work by 339 339 uh, 473 by 339 that's a lot that's a lot there so if I say this it's not still going to give me uh, it is but it's just way too much all right so width is that um, let's say 150 okay so we will use this but now we don't have a lot of space inside here if I give this it just doesn't work uh, it doesn't work because we need some space here as well so uh, 116, what we had before was, uh, let's make these, um, 
let's make this 250 all right i'm just going to adjust it a little bit let's make this a uh, 116 okay so something like this might still work okay so i'm just adjusting it a bit we will click on this uh let's add what we have here below then from there we can just complete the remaining part so let's click this a row and then put a text that is 500 by 12 so i click on that click on these to add a row all right so here we have a row and in the row i'm going to add a text the text is what i had copied and it is 500 by 12 so it's 500 by 12 here and the color is blue so i click there to copy the color then i will just go ahead and paste it here all right so we have that and also we need a um, we need some sort of padding around it so it's more like 14 so let's give that padding to the column all right so let's give this column 14 from the left and maybe 14 from the right there's some things on the top but let's just leave that for now so let's go ahead and duplicate this country d i will go ahead and click this and just copy the nike jordan so it's 500 by 16 click on here and change this to the text you just copied all right and then we can copy the color code it's 500 by 16 so let's change this first to 16 one six and then let's change this to black that's a text color and we will have to give it some padding if we need yes it has a padding of four pixels four pixels there and the next thing we need to do is control d to duplicate and we need to put this price so the price is uh, 500 by 16 again so we're good so just click on that and just click here and say control v uh click the row again let's see now we need to put these you know beautiful red circles right so well it looks like it's an image it looks like it's an image but i can copy the colors here so blue and uh i don't know what the exact dimension is okay so um i can't tell what the exact dimension is but i i will try 16 yeah so uh let's add a circle there first let's add a row guys yes I know you know why I'm doing that because I want to go ahead and give it some sort of expansion with them being together. So I'm adding a cycle now, basically a container. Then I will say here 16. And I will give it a color, the blue color. Then I will go ahead and duplicate it, Control D. And now I want to get the red color. Let's see the spacing in between them. I can't really tell what the spacing there is. Uh, because that thing is actually an image all right so i will just paste this here there you go and i will give you the padding uh space in between them maybe 16 is it too much uh yeah pretty much too much 10 okay then i'll click on the main row itself and give it an expansion like this you see that's good and then what i need to do is the spacing in between them this is 12 so i will come here and say uh give them 12 padding on the top 12 all right so we have this uh let me zoom in so you can see what we have done okay so the next thing we just need to quickly do is to set this up so this is 28 pixels by 28 and it has a color i'm copying it already all right so uh 28 by 28 yes 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 28 by 28 so now i'm gonna click this image right click on this image and say wrap it with a widget oh no no i just made i just clicked the wrong thing Control z to undo that right click and wrap widget with a stack now the stack i will add uh, a container the container's dimension is going to be first of all the we change it to a circle and then we change it to 28 and then i will paste the color that i picked all right and uh, next thing i'm gonna do is i'll just go ahead and add a column inside that and inside that column i'm gonna add an image because we have to put something inside it so this is it there's a red hat here 
uh, okay so if we click on the red hat uh, okay so let's delete it Control Z to undo what I did click on the column again let's add an icon it's something we can find in the list of our icons so let's say icon and then add an icon all right just to make things faster I will copy the color here the height is maybe 16 by 16 so I will change this to uh, 16 then I can paste this color great then I can change this to click on that to change it to let's say heart okay so now we have heart so we can just give it like that beautiful click on the column and then say center line now we have the same thing so what we need to do now is let's click on this and give it a height of 11 from the top and 12 from the side so no just 11 from the top I think the other one has been taken care of already maybe 11 from the top so now we have something like this uh, pretty much almost the same so we have gotten something cool too okay so let's click on the main container out here and click on the row give the row some padding from the top here which is 28 okay so I say 28 from the top then click on the container and just uh, give the container uh, a padding of 20 on the left and uh, another thing we need to do is let's let's go ahead and just give it expansion these yes uh, then we can say uh, infinite infinite so spread it across good don't worry we will get there then let's just say ctrl D so now we have something similar these are the parts and we can put here uh, padding on the right 20 all right and then we can go ahead and duplicate as much as we want ctrl D and that's it so we have this I think it was only two sides so then the next thing we need to just do is go ahead and then bring in uh, the other thing right the navigation here so how did we do that so we're just going to go ahead and right click on this and wrap this widget with a stack okay so that we can go to home and look at our tech our our you know widget tree click on this to close it this first container here is our navigation here so i will just copy it okay then i will go to favorite click on the stack and paste it ctrl v and there you go we have it here then i will go back to home and click to close this container so i can see the other one which is the row that contains these particular buttons so i'll just copy it ctrl c go to my favorite and click on the stack and ctrl v to paste so now i have exactly what i need so now i have been able to create the ui for this particular design okay so um with these i believe that you have been able to learn a couple of things and you will you know enjoy the video i would have loved us to continue working on this but uh i didn't want to make this video very long so we'll continue uh we are con going to continue this particular tutorial in the next part okay so don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the youtube channel and thank you very much for the huge support see you in the in the next part bye for now hello guys welcome to another part of our tutorial we're going to continue building our nike sneaker mobile application all right so uh we're going to just continue from where we stopped we have done a couple of these we have created this and we just need to create the 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 shoe description page and then we work on the cart and then we work on i think this is checkout they're different uh we're not going to create this we're just going to create my cart and then when the user clicks on checkout, all right, the the user when the user clicks on checkout, we will have the Stripe payment gateway pop up here, and then after that, when it's successful, this will pop up, and then uh, I think that will be all. We will somehow work on the uh, profile page and then sign out, and that's all. Yeah, that's the end of our application all right this is going to give you like a guide on how to really build mobile ap applications with our writing codes using follow flow okay i hope you continue enjoying this so where did we stop we stopped at the home page no uh, we did onboarding 
we did a uh, sign in, we did favorite. So um, I think this is where we are going to just continue working on our application. All right. So uh, what's the next thing that we're going to do? We're just going to go ahead and work on uh, this description page. All right. So let's let's create it. All right. So we already have like designs already here. I think what I'm just going to do is I'll click here to create a new page and I'll click on create blank. The page is going to be called details, all right? So I'll just call it details. Okay, so we have details and then I will just click on the app bar and delete it. Then I will come to onboarding. Was it onboarding? No, I think it was uh, home. Let me see. There's a page that has, okay, I think it's favorite. Yeah, so I just need to copy this particular part of the screen. So then we can come back here to details, click on the column and control V to paste it. All right, so that's just me reusing things I already made. So I'm just gonna copy this now, take it here, click on this and change it to this. All right, so we have this, let me see. And uh, what we need to do is this, I'm going to just go ahead and click to export. I hope it doesn't come out as uh, a zip file. My nightmare. Okay, so uh, this is actually something I dislike a lot. <laughs> I don't know why Figma does this. Mm. Okay, so I'm thinking about reusing, like, I'm going to create different things. I wouldn't like to, uh, I wouldn't like any situation to, uh, you know, take so much of my time. So if at all you want to use exact design, so you just know how to export and get it. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and just add an icon. Then I'll choose a random icon for cart. Okay, so just a little bit switch, no big deal. So I'll click on this and I'll look for cart, right? I think, was that cart? I think it is cart. Yeah, it's cart basically. So cart and, um, I will just pick any of these icons, maybe this one, all right? And uh, what color is it? It's black, okay. I think I'll just come here and pick a primary text color and that makes it black, beautiful. Well, it's not a replica of the other one, but it does the same thing, good. All right, so we have here Nike Air Max 270. The dimension, let's turn back our developer mode, 700 by 26, let's go speedy. All right, so let's click on here and uh, we'll click on roll. And in the roll, we're going to add a text. So I'm adding a text right away and I'm just going to paste what I copied, 700 by 20, did I get it right? Uh, 20, I'm not sure, I didn't get it right. 700 by 26, and this is railway. So 700 by 26, okay. This is it, and um, let's see. The padding on the left is 20, on the right is 96. So let's say here, let's come over here and say 20. And then here we say 96. Perfect, but not really perfect, really, because uh, let's go to our, you know, team settings and design systems. Let's go to typography and icons. Let's, uh, it's already railway. Okay, so why is it giving me a different size? Come on. So here is 700 by 26. It just looks smaller than what should be, right? Look at this. It should be bigger, like it should be much bigger. So I don't know why. Uh, should we go extra bold? No. Okay, guys. So I think there's a little switch here. Let's go with 36, all right? Aha, uh -huh. then let's click on these to make it fall. All right, great. So it now looks like it, it looks close now. All right, so we have this part, and then uh, this shoe here is covering covering the text here, main shoes. These are, this image of the shoe is covering main shoes. So I will turn off this developer mode, and I will pull these aside, and I will click on the shoe, all right? If the dimension is, um, let's see, uh, where is it? Where can I see this? I have to turn this back on. Okay, 500 by 16. Okay, so let's go. Let's click on the column and click to add uh, a row. In the row, we're adding a text. Okay, we're adding a text and the text is going to be, let's go, paste, main shoes. 
and uh, what was it? It was 500 by 16. So let's scroll down here and say 500 by 16. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is let's give it padding. I think the padding is going to be the same. It was 26 here, I think 24 or 20. It was 20 here. Yes. And so uh, I'll click on this. We need to give it some padding, padding of 8. And then let's see. This one has a padding of um, 26. Okay, so let's give it a padding of 8 here. And then this one, uh, I think it's 26. Okay, I think I got 26. Yes, correct. So now on this one, I'm gonna let's just go ahead and duplicate this particular row. So I selected Control D, great. Then I will just uh, okay, doesn't want to copy. Let's copy from here, and it's one seven. Okay, we already done that. Six hundred by twenty four. So let's click here and paste the content. Okay, so here we paste it, and then it's six hundred by. I think I saw twenty four. My mind said twenty four, something like that. It is. 600 by 24 but you see it's not even the real size it doesn't correlate so I will go ahead and give this one 34 I'll just be adding extra 10 and it looks bolder come on so I'm gonna give it a uh, 700 yeah something like this something like this might just work okay so now we've gotten that so let's do uh, turn off the developer mode and say control uh, Z, I want to return this thing back to where it was. Okay, good. The shoe. I wanted to return it back to where it, where it was. And then now we have this big shoe here. Big shoe. And uh, this big shoe might give us some problems because of how it's been positioned. Yeah, it's, um, it's not like standing horizontally or vertically. It's just slanted. But the thing is, we can go ahead and click on export. Preview the image. This is how it looks like, and it's transparent. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and let's see what we can do with these. Let's export it, right? Uh, it comes as a real image. Okay, so uh, the dimension for this image, I'm going to first of all click into it, click to open the folder that 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 this is inside, or this like where this is. All right and um let's see okay yeah this is it the dimension is 375 by 418 let's see what do we have here let's close this so this is 3272 by 341 i think we will go with this so let's say 273 by 341 so let's click on the column click on add a child to the column and this is a child which is an image and we're saying 271 by 341, something like that. And then we will go ahead, wow, this is big. Uh, we might have to reduce it at some point. Let's go ahead and remove the border radius there, which I just did. Change from network to asset. And then we will click on here and go inside uh, our application and pick this and upload. Okay, so this is it. Uh, let's see. Um, it's not as big as these. It's not as big as these, right? Uh, let's see. Can we do something like this? It's not really giving me. It's not giving me. I'm trying to figure out which of these will come out well. So this one looks like it. This one is nothing like it. Okay, so maybe this. Let's see height. Uh, let's say 241. Uh, one and width uh, let's say three does it change anything it doesn't change anything okay so well we're not gonna really pay attention to that because I didn't want to make it such that I don't want to spend so much attention on the UI okay um, yeah so I'm just going to go ahead and then make this really easy so this one all right this is an image uh, this is also an image, 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 image. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna get one. I'll click on this and export it. Uh, just export it. It's gonna give me all right. So this is good. Seventy-five by seventy-three. So I will just go ahead and click here. I will click to add a row, and in the row I'm gonna add a, an image. 
and the image is going to be 75 by 73 so the image is going to be 75 by 73 great so I will just go ahead and do like this and change from network to asset then I'll go upload that image I will try as much as possible to be speedy on the on the UI right then we just jump right into backend right because that's like where I want to pay more of my attention to okay so our there's these all the ones I think I can quickly get it this is the group the entire group um, okay let's click on this click and open it and then I have each of them okay so I think I'll just you know export them go okay so this one now export go and then this one export go and then this one export and go so i believe they're all images yes okay so i'm gonna just go ahead and say ctrl d uh, click on this and say ctrl d to duplicate it all right so i will just go ahead and click here i'll just put them randomly as far as they're different okay so i will go ahead and pick this one no this one is the last i think so this one is next and then i'll duplicate it and ctrl d all right so um next thing i'm gonna do is what do i do let's go ahead and just upload all the images i think that's just like the stage that we are in right now so we will pick this one no i picked <clears throat> i picked this one as first so i'm taking this one now so i'm going then after that, I'll duplicate, then upload the remaining. That's just how we do it. Ctrl D, select this one, uh, click on this, and um, locate my image. Uh, wait for this to load properly. Okay, look at this, then after that, we have one more, and then we're done. Okay, so we're almost there. Uh, okay, yes, that had worked. And then now the last one, all right, so we click here and then upload the image. Okay, I hope you're getting it. All right, so this is supposed to be the last guy. Yeah, because he was the first. <laughs> hope you get the logic there. Well, it's just about the range arrangement. Nothing, nothing you should remember or memorize. Okay, so now I have this um, spacing. Well, we should give it some spacing here, maybe 24. Okay and then we have this text uh so let's take had to double click like this it's um let's turn back our prototype mode it's 400 by 14 so i'll click on the column here click on add a child to the column and say row all right and then i'll go ahead and click here and say text okay then here i'm gonna just paste what i have then i'll click here to make it fall like all right so it can cover properly and then the spacing on the left is 20 all right let me copy the color of the font then it's 400 by 14 which i think it's the normal thing yeah 400 by 14 i'm gonna paste the color here and i'm gonna give the so this is 20 and on the right is also 20. okay so we have this now let's see how we can go ahead and um you know I give it some padding from the top so this is 22 okay so let's say 22 so 22 now there there's some things that if you observe it's not giving me the same kind of size here but let's see uh, we have um, 171 here let's see if we can do some uh, line height let's say 1.7 yeah something like that okay so we have this and then um, you can always change uh, the size later then here we have the read more okay um, let's just copy that and click here to add a we're gonna click to add a, a, a row to that column and then we're adding a, we're adding a text okay and then the text is this I'm gonna click on here then that's the row itself and then I'm doing this right alignment I'm gonna click here I'm gonna give it a padding of 20 I am assuming that that's what it is of course it is or uh, I say it's here 27 okay that's fine and it's 400 by 14 so it's pretty safe I'm copying the text color and then I paste it here pretty okay for me 
All right, so I can click here and then uh, it has some padding, nine. So let's give it to the roll, which I already selected, nine. And then what do we have next? We just need to go ahead and set up this, this and this. All right, so how do we do that? Let's click on this and say, this is 52 by 52 pixel. Let's copy, uh oh, okay, let's leave the color code there. Let's click on the column here and add a row because those two things are, of course they are in a row. So we click here and then add a container. And then the container, we're gonna say it has to be secular instead of square. And then here, we're gonna say 52, all right? Smart guys. Let's click here and say, um, let's use alternate. All right, and then we will click inside here and add a column inside that container, right? So we can add an icon now. Smart guys, I like the way you guys think. You see, you know, I'm getting ideas from you right now. Getting an idea from you on how to do this. Yes, okay, that's uh, weird, right? <laughs> of course, I know. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on this now to uh, search for an icon. The icon is gonna be heart. And then it's gonna be an empty heart. I think it was an empty heart. Yeah, empty heart. Okay, so this is it. And let's click on this and check the size. It's 24, so pretty much okay, the same way this. Let's click on the row now and add a button. So I'm adding a button. The button's dimension is gonna be, uh, let's see here. It's gonna be 280 by 50, right? So let's just copy these um, text, uh, text. 250 by 208 by 50 so I'll come down here okay first of all let's paste this the content of the bottom first and say 208 all right so this is the width uh, the bottom's width dimension uh, this is gonna be 50 okay sweet and um, let's go copy the blue color of that uh, button so I'm copying it here by just tapping on it and then I'll click on here and paste what I copied Sweet. And then I will click on here, right? No, no, let's click on the column, then locate the container and give it a padding. Oh, it's not a padding we need. But look at this. This is 46 and this is, it's not really correct. It's not really like the center center. Let's just do what we have here. So 48 from the right. So let's click on here and say 48, all right? And then let's give it a padding on the right too. So 40 on the right. So let's say 40 on the right of that, so 40. So he pushes this one away and says, go away, leave me alone. All right, so uh, then then we have, let's click on the roll. And um, this is gonna be 60, all right. So let's say 60, 60, there you go. And then now, what do we do? Let's go ahead and click on this button that says art to cart. Uh, we're going to say icon, right? So we need an icon. It's going to be a cart, right? Yes, it's going to be a cart. We picked this one that time. So let's pick it again. And so like that. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So pretty good. Let's say 24, right? Better. Icon padding. I think I'll just say 16 here just to space things a bit. Perfect. So now we have this and we're done with our description page, like sincerely. And the uh, next thing we will do quickly is our cart. Then we start back end, like really fast. Okay, so, uh, okay, we'll do this. Then we will do successful payment. Then we start back end. Okay, so let's go to cart. Now we can go ahead and click on this to add a new page. And then we will say cart cart um, let's see uh, this is gonna be our cart let me see let me see yes it's gonna be no 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 what did I say oh yes 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 this is gonna be cart sorry my my brain didn't really pick details at that point okay so go off click on this and go to uh, where were we before we were in the details so I'm just gonna copy this Control C yeah, because I think it has something like that. Yes, it does. Come on, it does. So here, I click on the cart, click on the column, paste it. And then here, of course, we're gonna call this cart, yes? Yes, we call it cart. Don't put the horse, don't put the cart before the horse. 
well, it's just a, a quote that I remember, a proverb. I remember it has to do with a cart. Okay, so I'm going to click on the row now and give it this particular alignment. Nice. It brings a cart close to the circle. So now we need to figure out the distance apart. 95. So I'll click on the cart text, that is a text widget, and say parting on the left is 95. That way it will always be far away from the cycle. By cycle I mean navigation, back navigation here. So we have three items here. Perfect. So let's click on here and say uh, let's add a row. And in the row we're going to add a text. Okay. Perfect. Let's go. And so here, this says three items. Let's go ahead and then just paste it here. I'm a little bit speedy, I know. Uh, it's 500 by 16, padding is 20, okay. So let's say 20 here, and then scroll down, 500 by 16, pretty much good. All right, well, it doesn't look like it. I'm gonna go 700, yes. So click on here and add the padding above, uh, it's going to be uh, 16. And we're giving that to the roll, so 16, perfect. Perfect guys, let's go, let's keep going, let's push this up. Alright, so uh, this said Poppins, okay, so the, 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 the font family here is different from the other one. So let's just look, search for Poppins here, Poppins, okay. So there you go, we have Poppins, perfect. Now it looks too thick. Okay, so maybe maybe just right. Let's take it back to 500. Uh-oh, bad idea. 600. Okay, maybe this. All right, so now we have to create this card. Um, this card, right? So the card here is 267. Uh, yeah, 267 by 104. Okay, so let's come over here. And of course, it's in a row. So let's click on here and add a row. And inside the, the row, we're going to add a card. And that card is going to be, come on, did I just forget that? It's a 267. Actually, we're not supposed to fix the width, but we will change it. But let's just use it for now. 267 by 104. So we will say 267 by 104. And uh, let's look at this. The, the border radius, the card is supposed to have border radius. But it's not showing me what it is. Come on, why? What's happening? It's not showing me what the border radius is. Okay, so, well, it says here 8. So, well, let's, let's give it 8. So, give it 8. And then, we have an image here. Okay, wait, let's see. There, I think all of this is the image. But, let's click on this and preview. No, it's not. I think it's... Okay, so this is like an in all of this should actually be the image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the two, turn off this, and now I've selected the two. I say Control J. All right, so so now I have two, two of them, so I can click on ex export preview. The two they join now. They joined as one, eighty-seven by eighty-five. So let's inside this container I'm gonna add what a row yes guys you're very smart and then I'm gonna add an image the image is gonna be 87 by 85 it's going to be 87 by 85 great then we're going to I think we can leave the ball already is there right not so uh, then now what do we do we just need to give it some padding I can click on Alt to see the padding on the left. So it says here 10. And I say 10 too. Why? Why would I say something different? Okay. So I will go ahead and click on this and say Accent. Did I say Accent? Asset. Okay. So let's go to, uh, let's see, what did I download? I think this is it. Okay. So I think this is it. Yeah. Let's go. So that's it, and uh, the next thing we need to do is these. So this is gonna be inside a column, right? Yes, it's gonna be inside a column. So, and they're not, just, they're just like singular things. So I'm gonna click on the row here. I'm gonna click on add a child, and I'm gonna say column. In the column, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a text. Yes, I just added a text, why not? Then I go ahead and say 
this is based in there and I'm gonna click on alt no no click outside first alt 29 Ooh la la well must it be 29 can't it just be center aligned I think we can just center align it but before we continue let's look at the dimension it's um let's turn on this it's 500 by 16 so let's go so let's say uh, 500 and we say 16 and uh, let's click on this and say Control D. So Control D, Command D, and then I will just go ahead and copy these. Uh, it doesn't want to follow me. So it's 500 by 14. Uh, this one is slightly less than the other one. Okay, so paste this, and here is 14. And I'm gonna click on the column. It's scattered right now, so I'll say left alignment. I'm gonna click on this text and try to give it some spacing. I think it's six. I have to click on the Alt key to figure that out. So I'm gonna click on the column now and say center align. Perfecto. Okay. But somehow, somehow it doesn't spread across like this. Meaning this text is not as long as this space. Okay. Uh, no, no, it's not that. Okay, so let's click here and look at the difference here. There's a padding of 30. Yes, yes. Let's give it 30 padding to this. Sweet. Now it looks better. Pretty, pretty better. So let's click on the cat, that's the container. And then let's give it some padding from the left. So it's 20, just like the others. So let's say 20. Now we've done that. Let's go ahead and click on the row and set up this one. I like this. So this is 58 by 104. So let's come over here and say um, uh, container. Can we do a button? Uh, no, let's do container, 58, and we say height is 104 here, and um, inside this container, okay, before we continue guys, let's just do it step by step, it has one more color here, so let's click this to copy the red, beautiful red color, red, beautiful red color, wow, very good with words, um, 10, and um, I, I'm supposed to have been a poet. What am I doing building mobile applications? David, you need to consider you know, changing career. So here I'm going to, no guys, I'm not gonna consider changing career. So I'm gonna click an icon here and uh, click here and say delete. All right, so delete. It's supposed to give me like, I'm gonna use any of this, all right? So I'm using this one. And so I'm gonna say white. I'm changing the color white. It's pretty big here. Like, um, I don't know why it's not selecting. Come on. I should be able to select this. Uh oh, no, not to the last digit. Just, oh, it's not giving me exactly what I want. Okay, guys, so I'm trying, no, I'm not using the exact replica of things. You can always replicate things, like get it exactly the way it should be and all of that. But this is what I'm building, okay? I don't want to start exporting things and all of that. I want you to learn. You can do the other side yourself. So let's see, um, let's click on this. And I'm gonna add uh, eight here. And I'm gonna click on this. And uh, let's see, padding, of, okay, no. I think we're good. So I'm gonna wrap this row in a widget called list view, because I'll be generating it from database. And I'm gonna give this list view a padding of 16 from the top. Okay, so 16. Now it looks good. It looks pretty good. But there's something I want us to do. Let's click on this column. Let's click on this. And I want us to give it some padding. Let's, let's, um, this is a container for this one. So let's give it some padding on the right. It's gonna be 22, I think. Yes, 20 as well. So I'm going to say 20 and I'm going to tell it I want you to expand, okay, the way you like and I want you to have an infinite width. Beautiful. The reason is because we'll be changing screen and if we fix this width, we're not going to have a good application. So I'm clicking on this and say expand the way you want and have an infinite width too. Okay. Now that is not working the way I imagined. Uh, okay, click on this, expansion, 
Uh, okay. I'm not getting what I want for real. Okay, so I'm gonna fix this one then. This one might just have to be fixed. Uh, it was 58, so let's say 58. Come on. Okay. All right, now that's the problem. Okay, guys, sorry, let me just try to fix this up. This push what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm, this is my container, right? This is my container. I'm supposed to have like a, an infinite. If I do this, it's not gonna work. It crashes because the weight is set to be infinite. Okay, so now there's a problem that is gonna take me some. I think I'll finish this up later so let's say what what did we use at first so let's just go back to how it was uh we used to six seven so let's just use two six seven again okay and then we can go back to this right perfect uh we will try to adjust this a bit later yeah okay i will figure out what happened there what went wrong okay so before we continue um while we continue this is what we're gonna do next okay so uh turn on back uh, this and then we'll click on this this is this card is 375 by 258 actually in finite weight let's click on the column here click to add a child to the column and it's gonna be a container and the width is gonna be infinite yes and the height is gonna be 258 yes so let's say 258 now we want it to stick to the bottom of the screen. So I'm gonna click here to stick it. But now it doesn't wanna work like that. It doesn't wanna say, it doesn't wanna go down to the bottom. Okay, so at some point we'll take it out of here and put it somewhere else, I will show you. But let's just start putting things inside it. So let's say uh, we're gonna make a column here inside the container because we have things stacked. So the next thing we need to do is copy this it's 500 by 16 let's click this now and of course we we have to put it in a row so we're putting it in a row and i'm gonna click on this and say text and then i say v that's ctrl v and uh 500 by 16 let's go 500 by 16 all right then i'm gonna go ahead and give it some padding of 20. let's copy the color actually uh, padding of 20 20 there you go and then let's paste the color paste here ctrl v and i'll say ctrl d to duplicate it and click on here and space it um, and then here i'll just say 20 so uh let's copy this this is gonna be 500 by 16 but really black and uh, so I'm gonna just paste it here. It's 500 by 16, but black. I'm using primary text, and I'll click on this and uh, just bring it down a bit. So padding is 36 from the top, so I'm gonna give it 36 here. And I'm just gonna say Control D to duplicate, so that I can have this part. All right, so I'm copying this, and now I'll just click on this and paste it and that's it i leave the price there it's just our figure and then this line uh i'm gonna click on this it's a it's just a vector um what do i do really with that line okay for us we're just gonna have um we're just gonna have uh what is it called let me see we don't really have a line in photo flow so i'm just gonna say um, well, we have something called divider. Yes, we have divider. And uh, it breaks, dotted, dashed, okay, great. And um, spacing is 18, okay, this one is 18, this one is 12. So let's click here and say 12 for this one. And then for the divider is 18. 
it, oh, it doesn't give me any spacing. Okay, so I have to give it to this row here and say 18. Okay, so the divider is here. And what's the color of the divider? This is make, no, not that one, this one. And we're copying it. And we're pasting the color here for the divider. Now it shows. All right, so let's see. Do we have some padding? I think yes. But how do we give a padding of indent? Okay, maybe this indent is, ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Indent and then indent from endpoint. Okay, perfect. And then, um, I think that's about it, right? So uh, the width, the thickness, we can just say two here. Uh, I think I did say two. Yeah, something like this. Okay, so we have this. And the uh, next thing we need to do is total cost. So I'll just copy one of this, Ctrl C, and click here and Ctrl V to paste it. And here I will say total cost copy it it's 500 by 16 but black okay uh, paste this here and scroll down 500 by 16 but black so primary text black okay then this one is blue so I'm just gonna copy it and click on this and give it a color blue and uh, what's the last thing we're doing here the bottom for checkout it's 50 as a width and uh, so we'll click on column here and then we'll click to add a child to the column we're adding a big button the button's width is let's just type here checkout and then we will say infinite is the width the height is 50 uh the color of the button let's copy it here and let's paste this here Control v and then let's go up here and say 20 as the padding on the left and we say 20 as a padding on the right and uh, do we have any padding is test 32 so let's click here I don't think we have a lot of space to say 32 we don't okay we actually don't uh, I think we have misused our spacing kind of uh, I'm gonna click on the big container here and just give it some extra space or or not okay no yeah let's give it some extra height let's make it 300 entirely why not we can we can always adjust things all right so we have this container here and we're done with that screen actually we just need to cut this cut this container out just control X and then we're gonna wrap this uh, you know main column we're gonna wrap it with uh, a widget called stack okay and then we will paste what we had cut here and then that way it stays here on the bottom then we have to click on here and tell it no 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 control Z let's click on the container and it's already here fixed at the bottom that's why it's already here perfect so that's how you go about this and then let's just click on the stack and uh, let's wrap the whole thing with a container just to make the entire background white so click on this infinite and hide infinite and so now we have a clean design something really neat so I think um, okay it wasn't really a, a white background so let's say ctrl z ctrl z ctrl z yeah it's perfect let's leave it like this because I can't see the white thing if the background is white so let's leave it like this you can always alter your UI the way you want it. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, um, this is a cart that I use. There's no need for a checkout. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and create this pop-up and I think we can start backend. All right, so um, here I'm just gonna go ahead and click on, click on this component here, then click to add a component, right, new component. And then I'm gonna look for the one called bottom sheet and I'm gonna pick any random one. Let's use this one. What do we call it? Uh, success. Let's just call it success. It's success. So we click on this to create component, and I'm gonna just delete the everything that is inside. Uh oh, not everything. Come on, just a column. Just a column. Okay. Why delete everything? Okay. Okay. Let's take up the least view. All right. 
Okay, and then we have this beautiful picture. And it's it's just a picture. Oh, it, it comes with everything. So let's export it. All right, so let's, let's click to export it. Oh, it's even a picture. Really nice. One, three, four by one, three, four. Let's click on this and see the dimension. This is 335 by 375. So let's come here and click on this uh, container. No, it's not infinite. So it's three, three, three what? Let's look at it again. 335 by 375. So let's say 335 by 375. Perfect, right? And then um, we can just, uh, let's click on here and we'll click to add an image. The image is gonna be, um, 134 by 134 wait a minute it's a circle image um yeah it's a circle image so let's delete this let's delete this and add uh, a circle image there's something called circle image there's a widget called circle image and uh i think it's uh this is where we write the dimension of the diameter so we say network to asset and then we will click on here and we're gonna get our picture this is it all right i hope i picked the correct thing because i was hurrying okay great then i will click on this row click on it again i'm gonna push it downward here great so we have the image on top and the padding is 40 so let's see, uh, let's say 40, uh, maybe 35, I don't know, there's something already there on top. So um, now we have that payment now. So let's just copy this, 500 by 20. So we click this and we tell it to change to 520. So this is gonna be 20 and we want it to be like this, broken down. So we're gonna say, 70 yeah 100 no 88 so let's say 88 just to have the same design so 88 okay then we are gonna have to say center align i believe that's how we have it there your payment is okay so it's not giving us exactly so i'm gonna just reduce this a bit to 60 and this one is six as well so like this yeah, there's nothing wrong with altering it a little bit. And then here, we're gonna say back to shopping. So let's click on here and add a button that says, I think this button is definitely gonna be 50. 50 and it says back to shopping. Country C, 500 by 16. Uh, where is it? So this is where I'm supposed to type. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see. This is gonna be 199. Well, let's just look at the padding on the left. 68. So uh, let's say infinite. And then I say here 68. 68. And 68. And then we're just going to go ahead and copy the color and the height here is 30. So we will say 30 here. No, let's click on it and really make sure that it worked. 30 here. And then we can paste the color here, Ctrl V. There you go. And so here we have gotten our, our you know, stop working out for us let's give it a brother radius of 20 all around to this one okay so um brother radius is gonna be 20 all around 20 20 all around okay so let's wrap this in uh a row hmm? let's say column let's wrap in a column and then give it this kind of dimensions yeah so we're saying stay at the middle all the time Okay, so we're done with that. The next thing we need to do is start working on the back end. And then so here, how do we work on the back end? First of all, we're going to have to start with uh, authentication uh, from splash screen to authentication and there you go. 
So let's quickly do this. Let's quickly just get it done. Let's click on here for the home page. All right. And um, here we're going to start working on the whole thing step by step. So, okay. Now, here you're going to go ahead, ahead and uh, let's go to the. This is the home. We call it the home page. Ooh. Let's rename this and call it Splash. This is not home page. Okay. Splash, and then we want the user to wait for a couple of seconds looking at this beautiful Nike logo and before they go to the next place. So we click on here to add an action and then we say add an action on page load. Okay, let's click to open the action flow editor and we're gonna say wait delay. We want to wait their time for a while, of course. Why not? They need to just wait and look at the beautiful Nike logo. So wait delay 20 seconds. No, just two seconds. Sorry. So uh, we will say add an action. After that, we want you to navigate them to uh, onboarding. I think that's it's the onboarding that we need. And the navigation uh, transition type here will just be fade. Let me say 500 millisecond. Okay, so this is the onboarding, right? This is the onboarding. So they will be taken here and they can swap this thing like this. Then we can say click to get started. When you click to get started, when you click to get started, we want you to, we're adding another action, we want you to navigate to login, right? So sign in, okay? And we're gonna use fade, I like to use the same thing. So 500, sweet. And then, so when you now come to sign in, all right, this is where you're supposed to sign in. And, uh, okay, so we're supposed to have like two pages. This is register account, and then this is sign in. So we didn't create register account because it's the same as uh, as this. So uh, let's go ahead and just um, let's duplicate this. Control D. Okay, not that. Uh, duplicate page. All right. So we will call this register. Register. All right. And then here we'll say register account. Okay. Okay. Let's just copy what we have here register account and um, control V okay and then here we copy this and we come here and we paste it here uh, okay it's the same thing actually like the other one so your name email address and password so uh, let's go ahead and see what we can do with this let's say control D this is gonna be your name. So let's say your name. Did I get it right? Your name. And then here for this one, the container itself, uh, let's say control D, right? Just to duplicate it. Now I have to find a way and move it on. Let's click this to close it. And then this to close it. Now we have to move this, yeah, we have to move this here. We have to wait until it's blue, and there you, there you go. We have that. So I will click on here and rename this text field to name, okay? So that can help us later. Here, I'll rename it to email, and then here, I'll rename it to password, okay? All right, so now we have all of that. So this CACS sign up, this is going to be sign up, sign up, and login. Okay, so new user. Uh, okay, let's change this to already have an account. Um, not, not good. So let's come here. And let's come over here and click on this and paste this here. All right, let's uh, cut this one out and click here and paste this here. Perfect. And then here we will say sign up. Okay. Then here we will say sign up. All right, perfect. Okay, so uh, then we don't need recover password when you're creating an account. So we are gonna have to delete this, go. 
All right, perfect. So we have register account. How do we set up our authentication for our application? This is the first backend question. So we have to go to Firebase. We have to go to Firebase, Firebase, console at firebase.google.com, and then we're going to have to create a project for our application. Uh, you've reached the project limit for your account. Really? Okay. Um, do entrepreneurship. Okay, let's go. I'm just going straight to another of my uh, Firebase accounts. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to come over here and say Nike. Nike sneaker app. So I create a project, right? You've gone through this process a couple of times. If you're told you've been watching my YouTube channel, YouTube videos. So I'll click on this to continue, turn off that Google Analytics and create project. Now, why are we doing this? Let's come here to settings. We want to go ahead and connect our Firebase because it is with Firebase that we will be able to authenticate our application, authenticate our users and give them access to our application. So we need to put the Firebase product ID here and connect and that way we need to be able to get the ID. And the ID can only be gotten after you've created a Firebase project. So I click on continue and now I have a Firebase project for my Nike sneaker mobile application. So I'll click here and go to project settings and then here and I, I now have my Nike sneaker app beautiful so i come here i'm gonna paste it i'm gonna run into trouble now it says flutterful doesn't have access to this you know this error already so let's go to users and permission and fix that error and so i'll click here and say firebase i'm gonna add firebase as an editor flutterflow make sure your spellings are correct firebase at flutterflow.io as an editor and done and add member okay so that way we have already done our setup, okay? And so we can come back here and click on connect and it's a success, beautiful. And then we have to click on auto generate config files. This is gonna generate the small tiny bit of files that we need for our application to work very well. Okay, so we wait for a few seconds and then we'll have our application running smoothly. Like, you know, not like running smoothly, but you know, with every single thing it needs to run smoothly. There you go. I got it. Okay, so let's click on here. Okay, and then this is where you're supposed to select your team. And this is a, uh, uh, okay. Let's just leave this part and uh, this will enable the web platform support for your project. Uh, do we need to enable web? Let's just go for next step. I want us to uh, enable authentication and enable user collection. And so we start building. We have to deploy Firebase storage, not yet. So let's come back here to, uh, to Firebase, click on authentication. We now want to set how we want our users to be authenticated. So click on get started. Okay, I'm a bit speedy, I know. So click on email and say enable and say save. Okay, that's it. We want them to be authenticated via email. So let's click on build and go to Firebase database. We're going to turn on our Firebase database and turn on storage. These are the two things we need to turn on. And that way we are ready for the dance. So I click on create and then I'll wait for a couple of seconds. And then I'm going to, well, I can leave this like that and say enable, start in test mode and say enable. Okay. If you want to do production mode, you start with production mode, but we are currently doing test mode. Okay. So the next thing we need to do quickly and really fast is we need to go ahead and then do something fantastic. What do we do? Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to come over here, build and say storage. And then on storage, we're going to go ahead and say click get started and start in test mode as well. And next and done. Okay. So after this is successful, we will come back here and deploy Firebase storage. And then that way we will not have this error anymore. Okay, we'll have first error. This error is still be there. Let's see, when it's done, we'll fix those two errors. You have to always check here to see that you don't have errors. Your job is to not have errors so that your application can work smoothly. There you go. Okay, so now that has finally worked out and we need to go ahead and then deploy Firebase storage for a second. Now that's deployed, one error gone, 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 gone. It's not showing gone. Okay, so we need to go ahead and set up our initial page. Because we have turned on authentication, we need to say that our initial page is splash. 
which is the first page that the user gets to see. Logged in page would definitely be home. Okay, that way we don't have any errors anymore. We have just one warning. We will check it out. All right, so let's set up our login scenario. Now we've started, you know, that's back end. We've started, 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 started. So let's go ahead and um, let's click here to set up back end. So we'll click on here and say add an action. When the user clicks on sign up, what happens? We want it to do back in database. We want it to do Firebase authentication. We want it to create account. We are using email as the authentication provider and the email field is email here and the password field is password here. We don't have confirmed password. We want to add extra fields. So we're gonna say extra field here is going to be, let's click on here and change it to display name. We don't want it to be a specific value. We want it to come from variable. So we're gonna to go to widget state and pick name. Perfect. So now this is also gonna be stored inside our database. When the user has been logged, like authenticated, they will be logged in. For the sign up with Google, we will just click on the container. That's this, the whole of this. And then we will say add action, okay? And then we will say backend database, uh, Firestore, uh, no, not Firestore, Firebase authentication, login, no, no, not login, sorry. We want to say um, back in, we say Firebase, we say create account, authentication provider, Google. That's all, that's all guys. All right, so now let's go ahead and make it such that if they already have an account, when they click on here, it should navigate them to uh, navigate to login, so sign in, okay? So we click this and say fade, and we say 500. All right, perfect thing. Okay, so let's click on this and uh, let's just make it sure that this can go back. So add an action and say add action and say navigate back. Okay, perfect. Now we've gotten all of this worked out for us. The next thing we need to do quickly is go to sign in. And on the sign in part, okay, we're going to go ahead and add an action again. But before we go ahead, let's rename this text field. Let's say email. Uh, email email and then we will say password uh, password okay so password great and then we'll click on sign in uh oh yes so we'll click on sign add an action and say back in uh, firebase authentication we say login email is our authentication provider email the email is at the email value is taken from the email field and then here is taken from the password field. That's it. That's totally it. Okay, so when th this is correct, they go straight to the home page. Okay, so let's click on this and do the same thing that we did. Click on add an action, not exactly the same thing, guys. Firebase authentication, uh, login, but now we're using Google to login, and that's all. And so for create account, we wanna click on here and add an action to navigate our user to register. And here we say fade, and here we say 500, and there you go. Let's click on this and look at the warning. Firestore rules not deploy. Let's click on here and deploy our um, Firestore rules. Let's click on this and deploy it. Otherwise, we'll have some issues. So now that's deployed, we don't have any, any errors. Now the next thing we need to do simply is, uh, let's click on this. Um, yeah, do we need this? But let's just add an action to it anyways. So let's click on this and add an action, uh, navigate back. Okay, we might always alter things later. Okay, so now we have done authentication, our users can actually get to, let's go ahead and just run a test mode, uh, a debug mode while we are still beating our application. Okay, so we have done this. What, what next are we doing? What we're doing next is gonna be very critical to our application. And uh, what we're doing is quite simple. So what we're gonna do right now is, um, let me see. Okay, so our user can now log into the dashboard. Let's go to the dashboard. Okay, all right, it's quite cold, excuse me. Uh, I know if I told you guys were here, you would have said bless you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Maybe bless you in your language. That would have been really cool. All right, so um, 
let's see what we can do here. Now we have our application here and uh, what we can do next is just continue building. And uh, here, what we're going to do is to uh, start getting things from database. Okay, we're going to start getting things from database. And how do we do that? So here, we're starting from here. I want this information to come from database, this thing, all right? I want it to come from database. So I'm gonna right click on it and say, wrap the widget in a, in a, in a what? In a list view, all right? So I'm wrapping it in a list view, perfect. And, uh, okay, actually, let's see, this is 16. I'm gonna remove it from this. It doesn't really look cool. And I'm gonna give it to the list view. I think I, I actually did cut it, so I give it a list view. Beautiful. So now I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna delete one of these guys. Let's see, did I click the exact container? I think I did. Okay, yeah, I did. So I'll just delete this container. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is click on the list view. Now I wanna put, uh, look at what we have here. We have an image, we have leave bestseller. Um, we have the name of the shoe. We have the price. So let's come over here to Firestore. Let's come here and click on this and we're gonna click on credit collection and we'll call it shoe. So let's call it shoes. So shoes and then here we'll click on credit collection and then we'll start from scratch. So name, the name of the shoe is gonna be a string and we're gonna say this price is gonna be a double. All right, so we have a double and then image. Image is gonna be an image path. Okay, so that's sweet. I think we are done. We're done like that. So now we have done that, we have to come over here, click to query the backend now. We've connected it to Firebase so we can query. So we click on add backend query, click on here and say query collection. What collection do you wanna query? Shoes collection, of course, my friend. And we'll say confirm and confirm. So uh, actually it's not supposed to go like this vertically, it's supposed to go horizontally. But we might have a problem trying to get it to go horizontal. If we click on here and say horizontal, it's gonna crash. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna have to set it up a bit. There's a way you set things like this up. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and uh, let's look at this. The container's height is 201, so I'll say 202. I'm gonna wrap this widget, all right? Wrap this widget, the list view widget in a container whose width is infinite and whose height is 203. Okay, no. Uh, it's not really giving me what I want. Okay, let's make it bigger. Let's make it bigger. Let's click on this container and make it bigger. Let's make it 200 and I don't know if it's too big, we can, we can always change it. 210. Okay, so it's 210 and let's clear the uh, color of the container, all right? And now we have done this. Okay, so, oh yes, I think I understand what happened there. So let's click on the list view here and remove this uh, padding from the top and give it to the container. And let's say here, contribute. Okay, perfect. Let's click on the list view now, right? And then let's try changing it to horizontal. Okay, now that didn't still work. Uh, okay, so let's... Um, Let's break these, let's remove the back end first. All right, let's remove the back end first. So the way I did it was, this is already here, and list view is here, and then here is a row, okay. So we're gonna wrap this row in a column. All right, wrap this row in a column, and uh, let's see what we can do. Let's click on this list view now and let's try to change it to horizontal. 
Okay, now that's it still didn't work. There's something wrong with it. Um Okay, so what what next do we do? Okay, I think I know what we need to do. Container has to have a fixed width. So let's come back here. Let's just uh give it a fixed width. This is gonna be um, 157. Okay, so let's give it a fixed width 157. Alright, so 157. Uh huh. And then let's go over here. Let's change this from expansion to this. Okay, yeah, we did this before because of the situation of things then. <laughs> right, so now we have to just fix our issues. Okay, now it works. Okay, so uh, we have that. Let's query our backend again. Query type. We say query collection. Let's say shoes, list of document, confirm, confirm. Perfect. So now this is a carousel to just scroll through. Now let's uh, get our image for our shoe. Let's click on here. It's no longer going to be assets. It's going to be from network. Uh, we're going to click here and say shoes document image. All right. And then uh, the next thing we need to do quickly is um, let me see something here. Let me see, uh, we have a column here. Okay, yes, great. So uh, click on this and give it a padding of maybe uh, 20. Was it 20? Yes. Just, no, that's too much. What was the padding for the column? It's 12. So I just wanted a padding of 12 for these as well. Okay. All right, so we have that. Let's click on this. And this is going to be the name of the shoe. So shoes documents, name of the shoe. Perfect. And then here, click on this and click on this and say shoes, uh, say price. Uh, it's going to be a number format. It's going to be custom specify format. Check that it's going to be display as currency. Confirm. And there you go. We're good. And I think that we have successfully gotten this. Let's see. Uh, has our... Okay, so this is our debug mode. It's supposed to pop up very soon. Yeah, so let's see. Let's see what our debug mode has for us. Okay, so it's loading up, it's loading up, and this is back end, guys. Okay, so let's see what we have. So Nike, sweet. And then it brings us here, right? Uh, let me just go ahead and reduce this a bit. Okay, yeah, so we have some beautiful things here. So we can click to get started. Okay, no, the action is on the first bottom. So get started, and then we have it here. So we don't have an account, so we have to click to create an account. And so I will say David. Uh, David. Oh, now that was space for contest and put it here. And this is gonna be David. And password. And then I would say sign up. And uh, so when it logs in, it takes me to the dashboard. Perfect. So this is good now, it works. Okay, so. Uh, now we didn't have anything, well, it's not supposed to show anything, right? Because we didn't reload the last instance that we have done. We didn't have anything inside our database yet. So one, one thing I would like us to do is, uh, we're going to continue anyways. So let's just start creating uh, some beautiful action. So if we click on here, it has to redirect us to favorite. So click here to navigate to favorite. Yes. And then the navigation is fade. I like to just use this simple navigation. 500. All right, so now we are going to do something really remarkable. So we're going to click on container, and when the user clicks on this container, all right, when the user clicks on this container, okay, what we want the user to get is we want the user to be able to to have um, what, 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 do, what do we want? When the user sees a product here, want the user to when the user clicks on this, it's gonna take the user to the description page. 
right where the details page where they can now go ahead and order so let's click here to add uh, navigate we say navigate to uh, details okay and um, we define say fade we say 500 and then we will say define okay now defining is we want to pass an information from that previous page to this page that's defining so we're gonna add a parameter here so we will say shoes shoes ref shoe ref okay shoe ref so and it's gonna be a, a document reference it's required and uh, it's gonna be from shoes and we're gonna say confirm now we've connected it's more like connecting pipes all right we want to pass information from here to the other so we connect a pipe now we have to pass the water and so we click here to pass the water we click here and then we will say uh, shoes document reference and confirm and that's it we've passed the water okay guys and uh, what else let me come over here we don't have anything in the database for shoes so let's click on manage content to open our content management system for Flutterflow so we can upload contents directly let's come over here and search for shoes shoes uh, shoes let's say shoes and I'll come to images uh, these are different shoes right so I think I'll just click on this uh, it's vans right so this is a van shoes so I okay right click and then I will copy image okay and um, I'm waiting for this to open up so I can actually add it in our CMS so this is where we have our users okay so you will see one user because we have just created a created a user and that's me this is one user and then we have shoes we don't have anything so we'll click here to add a document this is a simple backend or admin panel for your application that Flutterful made possible for you so here is van uh, I think it's vans vans I don't know how much this shoe is sold for uh, 86 okay let's just say $100 100 and then we're gonna paste the image of the shoe as a link and that's it did I get the name correct? Yeah, Vans. So then we need to pick another one. Let's just have like two shoes. Oh, we have Nike here. Nice. So I'll say um, copy image address. And uh, I don't know how much that shoe is. So let's add another document. And now we say Nike. And um, I don't know how much Nike is sold for. So 1000, I think. Um, let's say or this. And that's it. So now we have that okay so we have two documents in the database so we are fine with it and um, that's about it I think we need a third document yes let's find another shoe uh, Adidas yes let's go for this right click and copy image address uh, let's come over here and add another document and say Adidas and maybe one five I don't know our paste and our document perfect now we have three different products so we're going to go ahead and do stops for us so oh i even had this image here oh i didn't know so click on container and uh, when you click on this it should navigate we want to add an action to navigate the user to cart okay so very important so fade and 500 all right so now we have that the next thing we need to do is um, what do we do next I think that's pretty much it we've directed this we've not created the page for this yet so um, that's about it let's leave that for now and this is another one well this is another cart so let's do the same thing after all this is all about cart so add an action and let's go to navigate to cart of course and so we say fade and we say 500 all right perfect so we have this and uh, the next thing we need to do quickly is um let's see what do we do the user clicks on this we've passed the the water there now we need to go turn on the type the pipe let's go to details all right and then here we have to go to the scaffold of the page which is the first one here and we have to uh, query the document from reference and we're gonna say shoes we're gonna pick that parameter we had fixed and we say confirm we confirm beautiful now this is a then we now need to pick the name of the the name of the shoe we click here now we're picking it from database 
because we have caught it on the page. So we have name of the shoe here. And uh, let's click here and just pick the prize. Uh, shoes document, prize. Uh, let's say number format. Uh, we will say custom specify format, display as currency, confirm. There you go. And then here, we're gonna pick the image. Let's come over here, change from assets to network. And then we will say the image of the shoe. So shoes document and then the image. Of course, some image will not be transparent. So we don't have all shoes that are transparent. And um, we don't have variations for these. So I'm not gonna like go into super, super detail. All right. We don't have variations for these, but we can always create all of this as well. But this is not to give you like way too much about this. This is just to give you like a start of knowledge. So let's come here and add another field called description. Uh, description. It's a string and it's a list. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to click to open this. I'm going to click this one. I want to open this Nike Spank Women, Spark Women, Nike Spark Women. Okay, so uh, then I'll click on this uh, and then copy this. Okay, so I'm just trying to see how I can, um, what are they saying? Just accept the tracking. Why did you guys have to call it tracking? Hmm. Okay, so I would just uh, pick this particular description, just something short for Nike, right? Oh, Adidas. So I'll come over here and Adidas. I'll click to edit it. Ah, it doesn't have this other part yet. Now I need to reload so that it can have the latest um, thing, latest field that I added to it. Okay, so uh, let's see this one and then this one. Just allow all. I just need to get description, like a very short description here. Okay, this is a description. Okay, so um, I think I'm about getting the review. Okay, so there you go. Click on shoes. Wait for this to load up. And I, okay, this is Nike. Come on, I was working on Adidas. So here I can add my description, uh, date. And the next thing I need to do is for Nike, right? Uh, this is Vans, okay, so let's just get for Vans. Copy this and go here and edit for Vans, paste, the document, and then now I need to do for um, Nike. Okay, so if I scroll down here, uh, I think I would just see, I need a description, anything. Okay, so I'll just copy this. And this is related to Nike, I think, in a way. So update document, perfect. Now I have this uh, test mode, uh, I would just go ahead and do an instant reload here for a test mode. Okay, so we have this and um, perfect. Then let's come over here and get the let's say shoes document and description yeah that's it and uh, this is going to be uh, an icon to add a particular document in our favorite okay so uh, let's just set things up um, set things up in a way uh, let's click here and say favorite favorite All right, so favorite is going to have our uh, name and the string uh, we're going to have price is going to be a double. We're going to have image is going to be uh, an image part. We're going to have a uh, description is going to be a string and there you go. We're good. All right, so here. The simple action that we're doing is when the user clicks on this, we want to create a document. So they click on this action. So we will say back in database Firestore create document and the document is favorite. And uh, we're just going to add these fields 
So the name is going to be not a specific value, it's going to be from variable. Where are we getting it from? We're getting it from the document in this page, so it's name, okay? So I'm going to close that. And the price is not a specific value, it's from variable. I'm picking it also from the shoes document in this page. And I'm going to close this and we add another one, the image. Is not a specific value it's from variable it's also from the shoes document in this page and so we have image and um, then the the next one here is uh, let's say specific value we're gonna say click on this uh, description shoes document description that's it so it adds it and um, let's add another uh, action to this so I open the action in flow editor I want to add a snack bar a snack bar that says, um, what is it? What does it say? So snack bar that says, uh, add it to your favorite. Right? Add it to your favorite. Right? And the text is, uh, let's say, uh, let's say use blue. Okay, use color. And it's going to be one. And the text color is going to be secondary that's white perfect okay so we can high previews uh, snack bar so now here for this one uh we want a system whereby okay so we have another cart icon here so let's uh okay so um would you guys like us to change this to an image just for uniformity sake i think we can so let's click on this and um click to add an Okay, so no, let's go to home, all right? And then we will click this and I will just copy it at once. Control C, and then I will go to details. Then I will come over here and delete the container. And then I will paste this now. Perfect. So I'm gonna click on this and give it 20. All right, so we have this and it comes with the action already. So, uh, well, we just can't change this one. So click on this. Um, we want to add to cart and all of that, but let's see what we can do quickly. So we've done this. Uh, we want to add to cart and then checkout, right? So for us to create the cart functionality, we need to come to, uh, we're going to be using app state. So we will click here to add, we'll call it cart. And it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a document reference. It's gonna be referencing shoes. It's gonna be a list, and um, that's it. So that's our cart. And uh, we're gonna do something simultaneously. We wanna add something else called cart sum. Cart sum is gonna be like the total amount of things that we've added to our cart. So this is gonna be a double. Is gonna be persisted oh let me see I'm thinking what we can do with this go out and come back anyways if you want the user to always see when they come back to their cart then we should say persisted I think we should say persisted and um, we didn't do persisted here so let's make this one persisted too as I just deleted that cart let's do Create it again. Cart. It's gonna be a document reference referencing shoes, and it's a list and it's persisted. So that's it. All right. So um, here we can now create our. The reason why we're doing that is because um, we want the user to add items to their cart, and this information is not stored in the in Firebase. It's stored within the app state of the application. Right. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add, like when the user clicks on add card, what happens? So we're saying add action, we will say uh, update state, that will go to state management, update app state. So when the user clicks on that, we're gonna be updating the card. The type of update is gonna be to add the item to list. What are we adding? We're adding the shoes document uh, reference, okay? And we confirm. So this is what we're adding. Simultaneously, we're also going to add, um, we're updating app state, right? And we're updating fields. So we're adding another field. Simultaneously, we're adding 
uh, updating this this one we're saying uh, increment we're incrementing the value of the sum by what by the price so we say shoes document and price so we're just incrementing it that's the idea okay so now we're gonna have like every single time we click this it's gonna be incrementing that so let's say uh, let's click this and add another action. The action here is going to be a snack bar. So it's going to show a snack bar that says added to cart. Okay, added to cart. And let's make this white. Okay, and let's make this blue. Okay, use color. Let's make it one second. And there you go. Let's hide previous snack bars. Okay, so this is it. Uh, let me see. Do we have our test mode on? It's uh, it's still like this. I think we can end session. Yes, and then we can click start a new session. Yeah, let's start a new session so we can always use it when we need it. So now I've clicked to add functionality to our cards. The next thing we need to do quickly, guys. Let's see. Um, let me add a back action to this. So let's click to add a back action to add an action and say navigate back. Perfect. Okay, so we have this and uh, next thing we need to do quickly is we need to go to our cart, all right, and then do some things. So this is our cart. Let's add an, a back action to this. I like to start with these actually. Um, I don't know why this is. I need to find the container. Why is this not giving me? Okay, open. Okay, container. So I'm gonna add an action to this, add an action, and navigate back. Okay, all right, so um, let's fix these things one per time, okay? So we will go ahead and then click on this. All right, let's see what we can do here. Let's, um, let's uh this is already like uh, in a list of you okay so what we're gonna do it now is don't forget we're not getting this thing from our our firebase so we can do a direct query we're gonna be querying a child so we will say cart items and we will click here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say app state and we go to cart and then we confirm and then we confirm like that so uh, then let's click on this and give it some padding let's say 12 just to push things apart now we have this right and so what we need to do next is how do we go ahead and have um, you know get the results for this now we can just quickly click on this and look for there okay let's even try the text for instance and click this and we wouldn't find it this is card items we can't get anything from that we need to go ahead and still query the um we need to still query the the source of these things right like the entire source of everything so here we can just go ahead and um there, there are several ways we can do it uh we can go ahead and just click here and say click this and say query we're querying document from reference we're coming to we're going for shoes we click this and we say cut items confirm and go now in this way says product save item let's save it okay now that's how to do it so we queried the child first because we're getting this information from the app state then we now went ahead and queried the database but we are doing query from reference and we picked what we had used okay so now we can actually click on this and say okay let's begin to change things let's change from asset to network and then we can click this and we can find the shoes document and we can pick the image all right and then here we can get the name of the shoe so I'll click on let's scroll up click on this I can see the shoes document I can pick the name and then here I can okay let's do something for this uh, let's click on this to make it expand uh, let's add some padding to this let's say 12 so that if it's too much it's to float down that's the idea so I'll click on this and I'll change it 
choose document price uh, number format uh, custom specify format and then there you go and there we confirm beautiful so we have everything now you can really see it but we can always uh, let's come here and say image placeholder image placeholder we can just search for any random image placeholder like this one may not be too random nothing is really random in this world um, I'm looking for the image placeholder to use um, I'm trying to figure out what I okay, I think this one works let's see if it loads quickly and it's clear okay yeah so why not copy image address and so how do we use it click on the image itself and then come over here click and then you see default variable value you paste it and you confirm now it will show here okay so that's it it shows here now we have item right so next thing we can do here is um, okay so before we come to this other site let's uh, subtotal well, we might not need all of this delivery uh, subtotal what does it mean okay so i think uh, this is going to be our cart sum this this the, the amount model in, in our cart right hmm yeah yeah cat amount of money in our cart okay all right i think we're just going to try to let me see i'm trying to figure out what we could do here just to simplify things so we have this and we have this and in this so let's see let's see let's see okay what's the best way to run around this subtotal what does it mean uh maybe that and then we add to these okay hmm. okay i'm gonna just simplify things we don't really need this delivery let's take it off and um, i'm just gonna use these two values subtotal well yeah why not so i'll click on this and i'll go to app state and say card sum it's gonna be number format um custom specify formats and um, display as currency that's it and uh, i can just go ahead and click on here and copy what we have here and then i paste it here click here and paste it and confirm all right so like that so we have this. Now the next thing we need to do quickly is uh, let's see what we have in this test mode. Uh, I was trying to create a new session. It didn't work. Test mode session expires soon. Tap, tap new. I just clicked on tap. Uh, let's delete this and wait for this to load because we're going to soon test our application. All right. So... Um, what we're going to do next is quite uh, simple and direct. Okay, while this is loading, uh, what we're going to do next is um, now for this column, which is to delete, all right? So when the user clicks on this, we want it to delete this item that they added to cart. So let's click on here and say add an action. And uh, we will say backend database. We will say, uh, no, no, sorry. We're not doing that. We're doing app state management. We're updating app state. And then we're removing something from the cat list. Uh, we're saying remove from list. And what is it removing? We're saying uh, cat document, this one. Don't use the other one. If you do that, you're deleting something from database. Okay, in fact, you won't even be able to do that directly. So this is it, removes it. Now we need to do something else. So we need to click on here. Uh, we want to reduce the price here too. So we will click here. At first we did increment, right? It's still going to be increment, but we want to decrement. We can't just say minus because the values of what we're decrementing is dynamic. So we need to create a custom action. And uh, so we custom action, custom function. So 
So I'll say here, I'll call my function negative, negative price, okay? And uh, it's not nullable. It's gonna be a double. The argument here is gonna be price, like what we expect to get. It's not nullable. It's a double, all right? And we just want it to return, return uh, price times minus one and that's all it's a very simple custom function right so simple we can click this to say check and we can actually save function and then it's gonna ask us to bring the price so we come here and say shoes um, no back uh, price is coming from the shoes document and we say price and uh, we say confirm that's it so now it's going to be removing this is a negative price minus so it's remove it from the cat sum so it's a reduce so we will have the stock being reduced here you know you'll be seeing it all right so now we have this and the next thing we need to do is click on this and add a checkout uh here let me see what we can do um let me see we can um what we can do quickly here is, uh, let me see what we can do quickly for this place. Uh, for just this item, or let's do it for the role, we would do uh, card items, okay? And uh, we will say here, uh, app state, and then we say card, confirm, confirm uh, no we don't want it to be in a row hmm. we don't want it to be in a row why is it in a row uh, cancel let's see what do we have here is the option okay so let's remove this let's do this instead um, we want to query uh, okay I think I'm gonna figure out a way to come fix that towards the end right so we can actually get that because here is supposed to show us a number of items in our in our cart right so um, Well, there's a tricky way I could just easily do this, really. I could just do this simply. Uh, in fact, let me show you guys how I could do this. It might not be the, uh, you know, the best way to do it, best practice, but let's do this. All right, so this is a user, right? This is a user, it's somebody's account. So we can come to the, uh, we can come to uh, users collection and say, cut items, <laughs> all right? I'll just call it cut items, it's gonna be an integer. And I'll say like that. And so for every single time that they click, uh, every single time that they click add cart, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an extra, extra, extra thing. So I'm gonna come here and say, uh, okay, no, no, no. Let's not add it to there because now we'll be using Firebase resources. I don't want us to use Firebase resources for anything cart. Let's come to app state and add it. So let's just call it uh, cart item number. Cart items. Okay, let's call it cart items. It's an integer and it's a uh, persist. It's not a list, all right? And so what we want to do now is when the user clicks on it, we want to update. Let me click here to update want to update this all right so what are we doing we're incrementing by one that's it so we just increment it by one when the user adds something to cart then here when they come to cart and the delete all right it's simple so we'll just come here and add a field and say cart items okay so we will see decrement here we can easily put minus one it solves it it fixes us off so now we can do what we can click here all right and say um we can come here and say we're looking for the app state uh 
uh, let's do combine combine text. So we will say this is gonna be um, let's say here item something like this. And so for this first one, this is gonna come up give us app state and it's gonna be cut items. It's a number format. Just just leave it like that, and we can like this. So that's it. So we have the number of items in the cart, and that's how it's fixed. I hope you understand. All right. So now we have done all of this. Uh, we have one error here. Need to be checked. C custom functions needs to be checked for errors. Blah blah blah. So it's loading. That's fixed. So we have some. I think Firestore rules not deployed. We need to deploy it. Except otherwise, we're gonna have issues. Let's suppress all of this. Just turn it off and then deploy this okay so with this we're green all right so we've done a lot of things so far right and uh what we can do now is we can just go ahead and set up our checkout so but on this part now this is where we're gonna step into another level of our game which is gonna be stripe payment so let's see how we can do this quickly so we can go ahead and then click on stripe and say enable payment and uh, let's start pasting things so it, let me show you this is my uh, you no know, demo project stripe account so I will just come over here and copy my publishable key all right and uh, I will go to last year's October okay I think that's still gonna work publishable key I'm gonna paste it here and then uh, we'll come to my security key and then I will copy it and uh, this is security or secret secret key and then um, merchant display name so I will just say no code Africa okay and then here uh, let's say UK and uh, that's all really so we're supposed to deploy it now but there's something we need to do we need to come over to uh, project settings and uh, not even that let's click on here we, we're currently on the SPAC plan so you can't do payment while you're still on the SPAC plan so you have to click it and switch to pay as you go you have to use the blaze plan so when you do this you have the blaze plan okay so you can just go ahead and continue and it's gonna take you to this particular part of uh, uh, your firebase settings where you need to do a couple of settings to create your billing all right and then when you're done with all of that you've added your card details and every single thing then you're going to have uh you're gonna that's gonna be like one of the steps that you need to make to get your stripe working okay so now we need to do some other thing all right so this is this is my own part let me uh duplicate this uh let me duplicate this and uh i want to go back to let me see what do i have here oh uh, no I want to go back to let's cancel. I want to go back to my Firebase. I need us to do a setup, a particular setup before. So there, there are two things you need to do. So first thing you need to do is uh, change from SPAC plan to Blaze plan and add your credit card and all of that. They will give you a three hundred dollar credit, I think. Yes. So you shouldn't be worried about anything. And then the, the next thing you need to do is go to project settings. We need to turn on some things. So go to users and permissions. And then we will go to advanced permissions. If you don't do this, you're going to have issues with Stripe payment. Uh, it won't work. You won't even be able to get this deployed. That's why I've not clicked on deploy yet. <laughs> you see? So just follow me, right? So, and then here, what I'm going to do simply is I'm going to go ahead and then do some settings here. I'm waiting for this to load up so I can do my settings. I'm doing the settings on Firebase Flutterflow, uh, Firebase at Flutterflow.io. Uh, just, okay, agree. So uh, let's go ahead and then just click in here. 
and uh, I'm gonna add a role here it's gonna be a um, service account service account service account service account user all right so I'm adding that I'm gonna add another role um, it's gonna be cloud functions cloud function admin actually that's what I'm looking for okay all right so this is it and then I'm gonna go ahead and save I'm updating policy so now I'm basically cloud function admin and service account user these two things very important only for five and follow for the IO all right and then you can go ahead and then complete these other settings okay you have to finish these two things before you come back here and click on deploy otherwise stripe won't deploy capiche all right so get it done and then we'll see in the next part of the video this is where we parse so that you can get it right and then that's it so the next time we use we see this video i would have gotten mine right too okay see you soon all right guys welcome back to another part of the course so as you can see the stripe uh, stripe has been deployed successfully right so you have to have this green check so everything has to work out for, as well and um yeah i didn't really do anything else apart from what we did before so the next thing we need to do right now is uh okay i think our the box session had ended since so let's just run it one more time okay you see how beautiful application is meanwhile i think i just saw something in that uh application that i don't like um so here we have our image i want to get to bevel this image a bit yeah the border radius it should be eight yeah so now let's go ahead and then make it such that uh let's go ahead and make it such that what else what else what else what else what else what else i think that's about it um let's see so add to cart okay so here we're supposed to make our checkout per checkout functionality so the user will go ahead and click on checkout and now that we have process uh we have integrated payment what we just need to do is come here and call upon stripe <laughs> yes yeah, so i'll just click here and call upon stripe so it says stripe payment gateway the value the amount of money okay so this is where we're going to have to do a little thing so the money here according to what stripe wants is that it needs to be in cents that means we have to multiply whatever value we have as our cut sum multiplied by 100 so we can put the value here so we're going to click on here and we're going to go to custom function and then we're going to create a new function so we'll call it a uh, stripe amount yeah i'll just come here and uh, just call it uh, stripe amount the way stripe wants it <laughs> why not and then it's not nullable uh it's gonna be double right uh no this is gonna just be an integer yeah so multiply by 100 gives you an integer and so here add an ar argument we're gonna say price no not price we're gonna say cart sum you know cart sum is not nullable uh it's gonna be a, a double right if we have an error we will come back mm, yeah so the then the next thing we need to do is write the simple code here so we say return card sum all right card sum by 100 that's all we just want to return card sum by 100 and so i think this is about it yeah card sum by 100 why is it still showing this okay value of type double can't be returned from the function stripe amount um okay let's use a uh, well it has returned let's test the function and just see so if it gets a double let's say 56 let's delete this 56.89 and then let's run it it's supposed to give us 5689 it, it has compilation issues yeah so uh, we have it. that's why it's always good to test your code before you run it so i think it has to do with these are uh it was returning a double if we do it returning a double 
then we're gonna have it's gonna be fine but i'm not sure anyways if we have issues we'll come back and check it out let's see here let's run this this should work because we are getting a double we should return we're returning a double so it should work uh well technically it's giving us this so i think we're good let's just save the function and now it's asking us for the cut sum so we'll click on here and go to app state and say cut sum all right and then we confirm okay so now that's the amount of money in stripe and then the currency uh is usd okay and then uh here the customer email we will say authenticated user email the customer name we'll click here and say authenticated user display name all right and then we will say description like say shoes purchases okay and that's it so we have shoes purchases and uh, we're pretty okay now we're done but we have an error here custom function needs to be checked okay so um, that's will be fixed now okay yeah that's fixed so now we have this so when it's successful let's click here to open an action of flow editor when it's successful let's add an action and say um, what do we say here we're gonna just say uh, snack bar no sorry not snack bar. I like snacks a lot so we're gonna say uh, bottom sheet so we want to show a bottom sheet and we click here to select the bottom sheet it's gonna be success and that's it so we want to show this okay so when it's successful it's gonna show us a success here let's go to bottom sheet and click on the success and back to shopping so we want to add an action to back to shopping so we'll click here it's gonna navigate our user back to home and this is gonna be fade and 500 ladies and gentlemen we have come to almost the end of our course because at this point we have been able to create uh, most of the functionalities in our application this alone would have already given you enough skills that you can use in building any mobile application without writing codes using Flutterflow. So let's go ahead and test our application and then just see what we have. So let me just reload it one more time. And then let's see, uh oh. Uh, this is our debug session, it's, this is what we have here. Okay, so it's gonna load up soon. And then uh, I think at this point, what we just need to do is, um, I know that you can do this, but, uh, yeah, I know you can do this, but, and I think that's one of the reasons why I don't really want to do it. But I'll just go ahead and do it really quickly and simply. So it's just going to be this navigation side so that we can have a sign out. I wouldn't go ahead and do all of these ones. Yeah, this is, you can check the other part of my tutorial and you will see how to set up all of this, right? So, but I will just go ahead and add this part. Okay. So, um. Here you go. Let's uh, while we are waiting for this to come up, like let's just quickly work on their their side navigation there. So let's go to the home page and then uh, get that rolling. So here we want the user to be able to. Uh, okay, before we do that, let's go here to the uh, scaffold and let's click on here. All right, so I'm clicking to add. I want to add something called drawer drawer so i want to add something called drawer all right so drawer and then now i've added a drawer all right so we have a drawer now this is a drawer and um i think my gadget is a bit slow okay so let's scroll down i need to get um i want to get the color so let's click this to copy the color I won't put all the details there. I know you are smart, you can do this. All right, so I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna add a container. All right, and um, I'm just going to do uh, just a few things, right? So container, the width is maximum, the height is maximum, and the color is this color that I copied. There you go. So the next thing I need to do is, um, there's a picture here right and there's a picture here then there's name okay let's just get it done let's click on here and let's come over here and click on this 
and say uh, cycle image. Uh, cycle. Let's come here and say cycle. Alright, so we click here and say cycle image. Um, Alright, so we have a cycle image here. And uh, my cycle image is going to have to be wrapped in a roll and then it's going to be wrapped in a column so i'm putting all of these things in a column so there has to be a column here so i have a cycle image uh let's say uh, image placeholder let's click here i'm going to use this image as my copy image address i'm going to come over here and i'm going to use this as my image placeholder okay perfect uh huh so uh, that's not a very perfect image placeholder actually let's uh come over here and here we have 96 by 96 so let's reduce the cycle diameter 96 96 i don't actually want to do way too much for this page just a little thing here and there so i have um 30 excuse me uh so i'm gonna say 90 I'm gonna say 65 and I'm gonna say let's see the padding on the 36 okay so we're gonna say 36 all right so we have 36 there so let's click on here and uh, add a row so in our row we're gonna add a text and this text is gonna just be the user's name uh, yes Okay, so, and um, I'll just come over here and click on this and say text. Okay, and then I paste the user's name. And uh, I'll give you this a padding of, uh, I've forgotten what this padding was, 35. So I'll say 35. Okay. And uh, it has a size 500 by 20 and it's white. So uh, scroll down here and say 500. And I say 20. And I click here and say secondary color. Then I click on the roll. I need to give it some padding from the top. It's like 15. So I'll say um, 15. Okay, great. So um, let's click on this image and just get, uh, let's click on this and say authenticated user photo URL. That's what is supposed to show here. All right, so then uh, the next things we need to do is just this icon and then profile. I wouldn't do all of this. I would just duplicate it randomly and you can always change it. Um, let me see. Okay, so let's click on this and we're gonna click on this to add a role. Okay, so in the role, we're going to add an icon. Um, my gadget is actually heating up. <laughs> icon, and um, this is the icon. Okay, so this is gonna be, um, let's come here and search for profile. Uh, pro no, yeah, well, let's just say profile. It's a show as a human being. So here we use this and uh, let's change it to white and of course give it a padding of 35. Perfect. And then here I click on the roll and click to add a text. The text is going to be profile. Is 500 by 16 so I'm gonna scroll down here and change it to 500 and change this to 16 and then click here and change it to secondary background and scroll up and say uh, 16 okay so we'll click on here and the next thing I need to do is uh, 57. I'll say uh, 57. Okay, 
then control D to duplicate and let's see the distance in between them 34 okay so uh, I'll just say 34 going forward so 34 and how many are there so we have one okay let's, let's see we have already done this one one two three four four so I have to duplicate this one four times one two uh, sorry about that what's going on click on this country D and country D all right so I think that's about it and um, there's a line here okay so we can actually go ahead and click here to put a line I'm just uh, using this you can always change the so here I'll just say um, let's say divider so I'm adding a divider there is it all through no it has some indent so indent here will be 35 and um, and uh, uh, I will click on here to give it some padding let's say 34 below all right so then I'll click on this and you know what I'm gonna add I'm gonna add a button I think that was a button oh it's not a button it's a it's not a button so I'll click this to delete click and delete click on this and say ctrl C click on column ctrl V and uh, here I'll click this to change it to log out exit uh, what do we have here okay let's try log out uh, we have something like this so I can use it actually I think it's almost similar oh, yeah something close to that and then we click here and change it to log out and so here I'll just add an action immediately so I'll click on the entire row and click here to add an action add an action we will say uh, uh, backend is gonna be Firebase authentication you see here log out that's it so you log out and um, this is about it right and uh, this one you can always change it to any icon that you want to change it to so since uh, let's come over here to okay no not that okay we have here let's come here the users I'm gonna edit the user and give myself an image so I will come over here and look for myself. David. Okay, so I will just go ahead and click here to get a picture of myself. Uh-huh. I'll just copy uh, copy image address and then I will come over here and say URL and then I'll paste this here so that I can get like I can be able to have um you know my face when I'm when we're checking the application itself so I think that's about it we have um, we have done something remarkable and really really interesting so let's go ahead and just do one more thing um, when you click on this icon here uh, I'm trying to click on this icon something is happening okay so I think um, let's first of all start with this one uh oh hmm saying hide drawer okay so let's hide drawer yeah so we can actually click on this and um, we're gonna add an action to that icon when the user clicks on it we want to say drawer so we're gonna say drawer so it's gonna open drawer and the same thing with this icon so when you click on it we'll add an action and then we'll say drawer okay so we say drawer it opens drawer and uh, that's about it so um, I think that's that's about how far we will work on this and I think it's a pretty good application that we have done so let's see we have 11 minutes to test our application before this session ends so let me reload that and look for uh, stripe test card so i'll say stripe 
uh, test cards, test payments. Yeah, so I'm trying to get Stripe test documents so we can use it and test our application. Okay, so our application is loading. Uh, it's gonna show up here very soon. I'll just reduce this a bit so we can actually see everything that we need to see. So meanwhile, I hope that you have really learned a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, all right? And uh, keep learning. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and then copy this and we will use it here in our application and uh, test what we have done so far. So guys, this is the moment of truth. All the things that we have been doing has brought us to this point. Let's see what we have. So, um, our application is gonna come up soon. Let's make it 90. Uh -huh. Okay, so here you go. We have a, a lovely mobile application coming out. Okay, so this is it. We have an um, application. It's loading up, actually. Really sweet, if you can, if you, if you see what I mean. Uh, okay, so this is really sweet, guys. Really sweet. And then, um, this is how it works. So if you click on this, uh, it brings up this and you can actually log out if you click out here it closes if you click here it brings up there this nav again you click here it goes up and then we can click here to see our cart there are zero items in the cart and then we can go back we can click here uh favorite oh we haven't walked on this favorite i think uh we haven't walked on the favorite okay so we will We'll work on this as an extra, right? Yes, we'll work on this as an extra. Uh, let me just go back one time. Okay, so this is it. But we've done most of the functionalities, right? So let let me see what we can do now. Um, let's see. So if the user goes ahead and clicks on this, the mind the way the issue is this one. We could actually remove it, right? Because we are not focusing on this uh, functionality. This image, the way it shows here is very not cool. We will have to see, let me see what is making it behave like that. So let's say details and we click here. Okay, I think I know it's using this. So let's use these. Yeah, this is gonna make it show properly. Okay, so we will check that out next time. And I think we can just uh, modify things and. Since we're not creating functionality for this, so why keep it? Let's remove it. All right, so we take that out. And um, what else? So it shows our price here, Vans, main shoes, $100. And uh, I think we should just have an instant reload. Yes, let's have an instant reload. Meanwhile, what we could do is, um, let me see, let me see. Let's come over here to the, uh, favorite screen all right let's click on the favorite screen this is the favorite screen um, I would like to just uh, let's click on this I think we just need to just walk in this really fast all right so this is it um, what we did was to create a, a document Okay, I think we're gonna have to change our approach to things a bit. So let's uh let's add an action, a back action to this. So we'll navigate back. Okay, that's fixed. And um, let's delete this role. Okay, and uh, I need us to just um. We're gonna delete this container. Right. Yeah, let's take this off a bit. And. Um, Let's see, container, I made the width infinite. This is supposed to be 197, I think. Yes, so 197, uh, let's see, this is a roll. Okay, so let's wrap this before we wrap. Let's remove this uh, uh, 28 from it. Um, we're gonna wrap this roll with, uh, wrap the widget with uh, a list view. Okay, and then we will go ahead and just paste this here. Okay, and uh, we will go ahead and there's something we need to do. Uh, let's come back to our cart. No, not cart, details. 
So we did a functionality here which I want us to change, okay? Just uh, change this one. So what we did was create this uh, back end. We're creating a document. Uh, okay, okay, so I think we're fine. We're creating a document. We're creating a direct document. This is fine, no changes. And so let's go to the uh, favorite. And then let's uh, click on this and then go to We'll click on the list view and uh, we're going to query this. So we'll see her backend query, query collection, and then we would do favorite, all right, list of documents, confirm. And uh, let's click on this, now the row itself, and just give it an extra star. Let's say 14. Okay. And um, this is about it. Let's, uh, let's make this column scrollable might help things all right and then um, here we can just go ahead and click this and now we can change uh, we've queried it so we'll change from asset to network and we will click here and say favorite document image perfect uh, but now I think okay it's behind it should show right yes I think well if it doesn't we will have to just adjust things a bit let's scroll up and then see what we have here for the Nike the name we just pick the name here and then the price we will just click here and say favorite document uh, price uh, number format uh, we will say custom specify format uh, display as currency confirm perfect now we have this Okay, so uh, let me click on this and um, let's just give this a navigation to go to navigate to home. Perfect. Let's just uh, fade and then 500. And that's it. And so um, I think that's about it. Okay, so what is this one? Um, okay, let's leave that. So this is it, we have fixed up this, and uh, let me click on this and locate that container. Uh, I think this is it. Yes, and then now I'm locating the column, and, uh, well, okay. Oh, there is a, there is a padding here, let's remove it. Okay, yes, so now we have the thing in the center somehow. Okay, so um, this is about it, and uh, yeah. That's it. So we can come over here and all our test mode is dying in in three minutes. So let's see how fast we can just test everything in three minutes. Let me come over here and copy my this and then go to payments, home, uh, and then no, no payment. No, no, I don't need docs. Okay, so I think we can come back here and come to payments. So we can confirm everything that everything works. Okay, so here test mode expires soon, three minutes. Okay. Alright, so we will we, we have enough time to actually test every single thing right now. So we're going to just try to test everything right away. So here you go. We have um, if you click on the if you click on this, there's nothing inside here. Okay. Unlike before there was something there, right? And so here we'll go ahead and click on this. Now we have this. Oh, it still doesn't have a smooth border. Okay, I'm really particular about um, this thing. So let's click here and just give it a border radius of eight. Okay, so I don't, I wouldn't run that test again anyways. So if I click on this, it will show me added to favorite. If I go back and click on favorite, I now see that there's an item for favorite, beautiful. So I can just go back here and click on this. Now we have to add item to cart. So add a time, add it to cart. If we click here now, we see item has been added to cart. We can actually go ahead and then now it shows $100, right? It shows $100 and we can go ahead and just delete it. It's now back to zero. That's all the things we've been doing, guys. So we click on add to cart, it's added. All right, so we see it here. Let's come back here and go back. Let's add the second item to cart and we can even add it to favorite and then add to cart again and now we have two items 1600 beautiful 
then let's in fact let's add all the items that we have why not I like shoes so add this one too to favorite add to cart and then that's it so now we have three items we can actually delete them but I love all the shoes then we can click on checkout or wait for a couple of seconds it's gonna show stripe payment gateway this is it and we will just go ahead and add the uh, card details anything that is 23 35 any random date in the future so we click on this your payment is successful this is what we did payment is successful if we come to stripe payment gateway we will see um, let me just go ahead and then refresh this we will see the payment that has come to stripe don't forget we're still using the test payment okay so if you want to go live you can just go live so uh, in a few minutes a few seconds actually you will see the payment so this is a payment successful 2600 shoes purchases David Arok this time okay so now we have gotten that correct we can now click here to go back to shopping and there you go all right guys so we have successfully uh, you know created a beautiful Nike sneaker mobile application and um, if I told you are interested in having this application completed like this you can just go ahead and then uh, um, you know join my patreon and you will have access to the completed application okay guys don't forget to hit the subscribe button like this video and I will see you in the next course. See you soon. Have a great time learning. Okay, let's log out. Click this and log out. Okay, see you guys.